Sports is right here, Sports Vision. From the Assembly Hall at the University of Illinois, Sports Vision presents High School Wrestling, the Illinois High School Association State Wrestling Finals. Over 10,000 people are crowding into the Assembly Hall tonight. This is WrestleMania high school style. No, the techniques and the rules are very different, but the enthusiasm is certainly the same, if not greater, both on the part of the participants and the fans. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Lederman. Joining me is Rob Sherrill from the Chicago Sun-Times and the Grappler newspaper. Rob, this is the individual state final. There have been a few changes in this tournament for this year. That's right, Mike. As you know, for about the last five years, the uh, state tournament here has been a three-day tournament with the individual and dual team championships being wrestled on the same weekend. And we've uh, separated the two tournaments this year. It'll be a little less of an endurance contest than it used to be. The individuals are center stage this weekend, and there's been a lot of excitement. And of course, it'll be easier for the wrestlers, as you mentioned. Some of them had to have wrestled their individual matches and then competed in the team championships. This time, they'll get several days between starts. A couple of names we should look for tonight. At 112 pounds, Class AA, we've got a match between two returning state champions, Jeff Mirabello of Elgin, Andy Gardner of Springfield Landfear. They're both undefeated. Something's got to give tonight. 135 pounds, Joey Gilbert of Andrew trying to become the first class AA wrestler ever to become a four-time state champion. And at 145 pounds, Sean Bormet of Providence, one of the top 10 prospects in the nation nationally at the college level, trying to win his first ever high school state title. We'll see if he does it tonight. So we've got a long agenda for you, lots of good wrestling, so stay tuned right there. We'll be back to start things off in just a minute. As a sports writer, I've seen some great Chicago All-Americans like Latner, Grabowski, Butkus, but not as great as Jerry Gleason and his All-American team. Gleason, how do you do it? Simple, Gleason. Great cars, great deals, great staff, and great location. You're another Chicago All-American, Gleason. Thank you, Gleason. Thank you, Gleason. Brought to you by Gleason Chevy, Gleason's Golf Mill Ford, and Gleason Dodge Jeep Eagle. The everyday Sport Mart price is guaranteed the lowest in town. I get the difference in cash. It's the ESP guarantee. For the way you play. When I shop for athletic shoes, Sport Mart's my shoe store. The prices are guaranteed lowest, and they have the brands my team needs. For the way you play. Save $10 on Pony's rim high top basketball shoes and get a custom fit. Only $29.94. Sport Mart guarantees Pony for less. Sport Mart. For the way you play. Back at Assembly Hall, the IHSA Wrestling Championships, our guest, the Assistant Executive Secretary of the IHSA, Don Robinson. Don, wrestling is one of your responsibilities, I can tell from the tie. Boy, that is a wonderful <laughs> grappling tie. <laughs> tell me a little bit about the tournament and how it's grown. Well, th this is the 52nd year of the tournament, Mike, and we're very proud of what you see here. Uh, you know, we're going to have in a neighborhood of 10,000 people here tonight watching uh, uh, the championships in Illinois in 13 different weight classes. It, it has grown. Uh, over the years and we now see about 35,000 people attending the four sessions here on Friday and Saturday and we're very pleased with the quality of kids that, that arrive here eventually. You know it's interesting they talk about major sports versus minor sports and wrestling is always put in that latter category. Well when you look around you've got 10 11,000 people here you've got over you know, 500 kids competing uh, if it's minor nobody told these folks. Well I think that's absolutely true Mike. Uh, if you said minor sport to any one of these people uh, you know they'd show you real quick what a pin is I think. <laughs> so uh, uh, you know they're very enthusiastic about their sport and I think one of the problems with wrestling uh, amateur wrestling is that it's, it's very often compared to uh, you know what we see uh, with the Hulk Hogan and, and, and that and there just is no comparison it, it, uh, what they do is not a sport you know what you see here is a sport and, and it's a great sport it takes uh, kids from 103 to 275 pounds 
Don, this year you changed the tournament back to the way it was about four or five years ago, splitting up the individual and team competitions. What kind of thought went into it? Why was the decision made? And so far, how's it worked out? Well, uh, up until five years ago, two or three kids in a school could win the state championship in wrestling. And, and the committee at that time felt as though uh, we should be awarding uh, a program with more depth rather than two or three quality kids. So we developed what we call the dual team championship. And that was the true champion in Illinois. And we put that together with the individual championship so as not to detract from the good kid either. So on that basis, we put it all together and brought it down here at Champaign. The general consensus after five Five years of that format was that it's too doggone much wrestling for the good kid who is still on a dual team. A, a good kid could have wrestled as many as time, nine times in, in quality competition in three days. So now we're doing the individual this weekend, the team championships next weekend, and we feel like that's a much more equitable measure of good teams and good kids. Okay, Don, lots of luck. And again, congratulations. I don't know if we can get a close-up of this tie that Don has, but I want to get one of these before we leave here. Yeah. Coming up, we'll have wrestling action here at the assembly hall so stay tuned what you get out of a project depends on what you put into your workshop so get master mechanic power tools from true value hardware store like their high speed finishing sander for just 44.99 or their one third horsepower variable speed jigsaw for only 34.99 or get a Master Mechanic one and three quarter horsepower plunge router for just $65.99. And their seven and a quarter inch circular saw for only $39.99 at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. It's an indoor soccer shootout of champions. Northern Illinois University's 1988 Illinois Governor's Cup champions versus Indiana University's 1988 NCAA champs. It all happens Sunday, March 26th, 5 p.m. at the Odium in Villa Park. Tickets may be purchased through the Odium box office on game day only, or for advanced ticket purchase, call NIU head coach Willie Roy at 815-753-1372. This is the 52nd year of the tournament. We start at 103 pounds. In the blue, Joe Esparza. Esparza from Joliet Central. And in the brown, Bill Walsh from Chicago Mount Carmel. Rob, what do you know about these fellas? Bill Walsh has uh, been uh, ranked in the uh, Chicago area much of the year. Joe Esparza, frankly, a, a surprise coming in here. He was uh, third in the normal community sectional um, in the he won four matches to get this far, and he's fighting for the first takedown right now. Esparza in the blue with trying to get the points on uh, Bill Walsh. Now again, there are three two-minute periods. We will go through the scoring for you, although many of you are familiar with it. We're always picking up new fans. Obviously, the best you can do is a pin, but you do get points for for takedowns, for escapes, for reversals, and for near falls or near pins. So far, no score with one minute gone in the first period. Now we're close here. Nice counter by Esparza, Esparza. taking Walsh right to his back. Walsh had a chance for a takedown early there, couldn't finish the move. And they're awarding three points for the near fall and two points, so it uh, is a five-point lead right away for Esparza in the blue. Walsh trying to counter here with a grand B, and it looks like he has a reversal. He sure does. That signal there is uh, the reversal, the hands rotating. So it is now a 5-2 to two advantage for Joe Esparza in the blue. 20 seconds left in the first period. The official is the chief official, Bruce Bartos of Antioch. He has a whistle. There is an assistant official who does not have a whistle but can't consult with the other official who can decide whether or not to pay attention to him. Walsh trying to score with a tilt here. First two minutes is over. Esparza in the blue, leading 5-2 to two over Walsh. So Esparza is really the underdog here, I suppose, if you were a betting person, huh, Rob? Well, he certainly is a surprise to be in the finals, but he's wrestled very well in this tournament. He's had a, had a nice spot in the bracket. There's no question he took advantage of it, and he went ahead and got those early points, took advantage of another opportunity. His coach, Mac McLaughlin. And Bartos signals there off the mat. 
So they bring him back to the middle. Minute 34 to go here in the second period. The score remains 5 to 2. And now two more points going up for Joe Esparza, a 7 to 2 lead. Well, Esparza coming up with another takedown. And he's just had a tremendous state tournament so far. There's no question about it. Walsh in the brown from Mount Carmel. Esparza in the blue from Joliet Central. Esparza with kind of a crab ride here. Walsh trying to break the hand control of Esparza and uh, get out either for an escape or for a reversal and get some points of his own. And now it looks like he's done it. No change in control yet. No points awarded yet. That's the key thing. Change of control. It is still 7-2 to two with 35 seconds to go here at the second of the three scheduled period. Walsh needs to get his head out, and he did. That's a reversal. 7-4. to four. Esparza still with the three-point lead. Esparza's coach, you mentioned, Mac McLaughlin. Bill Wick, the coach of uh, Mount Carmel Caravan. Final 10 seconds here of period two. Five seconds, Walsh trying to tilt Esparza. And he did, and that uh, two points awarded. So we go into the third period. It's a 7-6, very tight match. Walsh is an excellent mat wrestler. He's got a variety of tilts that he can uh, bring you to your back for points, and he's very dangerous with that, as Esparza just found out. Uh, this match has had more reverses than Joan Collins' love life. Final two minutes. You're thinking about that, aren't you? Yeah. Final two minutes. This is Walsh assuming the top position. He trails by one point, seven to six. This is the 103-pound match. The first of 13 title matches we're going to bring you in the individual championships here on Sports Vision. Walsh looking for another tilt here. He could take the lead with another near fall. A minute 35 to go. Sparza broke out to the early lead. Now Walsh is on the verge of catching up. Walsh looking for another tilt, trying to get those hips down. What's Esparza trying to do now? Is he holding on for dear life, or is he trying to sit on that lead, or what? Well, I think he'd like to escape and start on his feet, but Walsh just got too much control there. A minute five to go in regulation in this match, and Walsh has taken the lead. Another near fall for Walsh in that situation. Esparza trying not to expose himself, just trying to ride out while uh, Walsh lo try maybe lost the uh, tip opportunity and uh, then try to escape. But now Walsh has the lead, eight to seven. With a minute one to go. So Esparza, who has been ahead this entire match, now is behind with under a minute left here at 103 pound championships. Very difficult, as you can see, to get off the bottom against Walsh. He's such a tight rider. Now he's trying for another tilt against Esparza. 40 seconds. He has been effective on the mat. Couldn't get a two count, but now he's going to get more points. Walsh showing dominance here. Under half minute to go. Third time that Walsh has put Esparza on his back in this match, and that's been the difference. They break the hold, and they award two more points to Bill Walsh. It's now 10 to 7 with 11 seconds to go. So you got to hand it to Bill Walsh. He's, uh, 
he stuck with what he does best, which is turn Esparza on the mat. He didn't panic when he got behind by five points. He just came back. He knew he had a lot of time to do what he does best. Five seconds. And the crowd starts to cheer, and there it is. That's the end of the match, and the winner by a score of 10 to 7. And the 103-pound champion is the junior, Bill Walsh of Mount Carmel. Quite a rally by Walsh. Eight unanswered points to come back from that 7-2 deficit. He's been a terror on the mat all season, and you saw an illustration of it here right in the state finals as he's the new 103-pound state champion. Quite an effort by Joe Esparza from the Steelman of Joliet Central. Falling just a bit short. Do you think he possibly got overconfident after he got to that big lead, or uh, just Walsh came back with superior technique? Yeah, I don't think Esparza got overconfident at all. You can't be overconfident at this level. You have to know that uh, that what, Espa what Walsh does best, and that's tippy on the mat. On the mat is where the last place that Esparza wanted to be with Walsh. He just couldn't get up off the bottom. Bill Walsh finishes the year with a record of 34 wins and six losses. And he is the winner and the state champion at 103 pounds. There's a good look at our winner. Now let's take a look at the Class A match between Mike Mina of Sterling Newman and Par Schoolman of Clifton Central, which is just ending. Mike Mena of Sterling Newman, just a freshman. His older brother Bob won three state titles for Sterling Newman. Now Mike, just a freshman, may be off on a string of four. He just won the state title 11 to five over Par Schoolman of Clifton Central. Mike Mena finishes the season 43 and 0 and the Class A champion at 103. We have both the double A, the largest schools, and the Class A championship, so we will be dropping in on both mats here. That was a good match to start off with. A lot of action, for uh, especially in the lower weights, who uh, you're really looking forward to getting off on a fast start, and that was it. Good back and forth match. A lot of action by both wrestlers. Esparza had his moments. He got up early, but uh, Walsh came back doing what he does best, and that's grinding it out on the mat, and he's the state champion. All right, let's go over to a 112-pound match at Class AA. You're looking at Jeff Mirabella and Andy Gardner. Mirabella in the maroon suit from Springfield, uh, from Elgin, rather, and Andy Gardner in the singlet that's uh, black with the stripe from Springfield Lanfear. Both these fellas are undefeated, so this is a battle of the Titans at 112 pounds. Mirabella, the winner in the 98 class uh, last year at State. Gardner won the 105 at State last year. So Gardner this would be a honey of a man. Gardner with the first scoring opportunity, trying for a single leg takedown at the edge of the mat, and they'll bring it back to the center. With the stripe. That is Gardner. Arabella on top right now. Gardner third at 98. And he beat Mirabella for third. That was two years ago. Both these wrestlers among the best in the state. Mirabella has just great hip action. Tremendous athletic ability. Um, some say maybe the best they've ever seen in an underclassman here in the state of Illinois. Under a minute to go. I'm sorry, Rob. Uh, 45 seconds to go here in the first period. Still no scoring. There's a good look at Mirabella. He is a junior. Gardner a senior. Gardner also a tremendous record and coached by his father, Jim Gardner, who's in his corner right now. Coach for Elgin is uh, Steve Salisbury. 30 seconds to go here in the first period, and neither wrestler has scored. Mirabella tried to score with a headlock there. Gardner just has great balance to counter it. And the official brings it back to the center as they carried off the boundary of the mat. 15 seconds here, first period, no scoring. We get the first two points and they go to Mirabella. Mirabella with a single leg 
switched off to a body lock, got the takedown. Now at the end of the first period, they will flip a uh, coin. They're doing that right now. And Mirabella gets the choice right here, although we're going to have a bit of a time because Gardner has come up with a bloody nose. Let's talk about... Uh, Let's talk about let's talk about the coin flip and the uh, choice of positions. In the second period, the official flips a coin, and the uh, it's a red and green coin that uh, designated with the two wrestlers. The wrestler whose choice comes up has the choice to either start the second period on the top, bottom, or neutral positions, or else to defer the choice to his opponent. His opponent then must choice. Let's take a look here at uh, how Gardner came up with the bloody nose. Looks like Gardner just hit his head right there on the mat. He was stunned just for a second. Back to action here as uh, Mirabella gets two more points as we begin the second period. Reversal right off the bat to start the second period. Mirabella always been very aggressive. He likes to force the action. Now he's looking for a tilt for more points. He's already up four to nothing. I know there are always going to be arguments of whether you want to start on the top or on the bottom. Now we get an escape, uh, what is that, one point now for Gardner. That's correct. Mirabella elected to start both up because Gardner is just a magician on the mat. The worst thing you want to do is start on the bottom against Gardner because you may not get up. Talk about the differences in choosing whether you start up, down, or neutral. Well, if you're good on the mat, the chances are you might want to start in the top position so that you can ride your opponent and try to turn him. If you're good at getting out and getting an escape and then going on your feet, you'll probably take the bottom because you can get in a point for escape. If you want to avoid being on the mat with your opponent altogether, you'll probably choose both up as Mirabella did there. And another takedown. Mirabella with a 6-1 to one lead over Gardner under a minute to go here in the second period. Remember, three two-minute periods. Now we got a stalling call against Gardner. No penalty yet. Three takedowns so far for Mirabella. Very, very difficult to beat on his feet. You look, they, watch how he's just moving Gardner around. They gave Gardner another escape point, so it's now six to two with 30 seconds to go. You'll see the officials have uh, armbands or wristbands with the red and the green. Each wrestler is assigned to a corner. They also have the leg straps that show which corner it is. It's simply to. Seconds. For scoring purposes, the scoreboard's lit up the red and green. Simply allows the crowd at the uh, scorer's table to see which wrestler is being awarded points. And Mirabella has the red anklet on, and you can see that uh, Gardner's got the green one on, so that explains that. Ten seconds to go, second period. Mirabella with a 6-2 to two lead over Gardner. Both off the bat with six ticks left on the clock. Mirabella just has that combination of, of great motion and, and uh, aggressiveness. It's just very difficult to get a good shot at him. Well, if Gardner's going to do it, he's got two minutes to try, and he trails by four points, six to two. Gardner has selected the top position for the third period, and you can see why he's done it. He really hasn't been able to stay with Mirabella on his feet. The mat is where He's, he scores most of his points. He's going to try to do what he does best right here. All right, underway in period number three. Jeff Mirabella. Right now, he is in the maroon on the bottom, and Andy Gardner from Springfield Lanphier. The lion is in the black with the orange stripe. Been at 30 to go now. Gardner just trying to get up to his base, now trying to stand up. Gardner looking for that uh, tilt, the same kind that we saw Walsh use. A minute 15 left in the match. And the official breaks them. The official will break him for several reasons. A potentially dangerous hole, nobody's getting anything accomplished. Any other reasons? Those, are the, main, those are the main two. We're trying to emphasize action in the sport, 
and uh, if no significant action is occurring, the rest, the referee will stop the wrestlers, bring them back to their feet. Six to two. Arabella on the bottom with the lead. Andy Gardner trying to score in the final minute five. Remember, both these fellas are undefeated. Both are defending state champions. Only the fourth meeting, well, the fourth meeting in the last two years between defending champions. And that's only happened three times in the previous 50 years. 45 seconds to go. Six to two. Gardner trails. He is on top. Gardner trying to turn him for points. Mirabella just doing such a good job of keeping keeping his hips down, even though it doesn't, he's really not trying to escape right now. He's just trying to stay out of trouble. And Gardner gets a stalling warning, and that means a point for Mirabella. So it's seven to two. It's the last thing Gardner needed when he's down four points with 30 seconds to go. That's true, although I have to say that Gar Mirabella really wasn't trying to escape there. I thought the stall warning might have gone the other way. I wondered about that myself. It's 20 seconds left, and it looks like Jeff Mirabella has got his second state championship. Well, all, other being things, all other things being equal, the good wrestler on the feet will usually beat the good wrestler on the mat. And that's what happened here. Jeff Mirabella, the winner at 112. Let's shift over now to the Class A. We've got Jason Gonski from Kankakee and Thad Davidson from Litchfield. Jason Gonski of uh, Bishop McNamara. He's in the green. Leading 10 to 4 in the final seconds, and it looks like he's going to become the first state champion for McNamara in quite a few years. There we have it in Class AA. Jeff Mirabella, the winner. Mirabella from Elgin and in Class A, Jason Gonski from Bishop McNamara of Kankakee. That Class A 112 final was also a match between unbeatens. Gonski finishes the season and his high school career 36-0-2. And the 112-pound state champion in Class A. Wow. And Mirabella finishes his career 114 and four, and for this season undefeated at 37 and 0. Now let's pick up the award ceremonies for the 103 pound champions. We have the first through fourth place finishers in Class A, and the first through sixth place finishers in Class AA. Morzerati of Joliet Central and William Schmidt of Godfrey and Marty Williams of Mohammed Seymour. In addition, we wish to express our heartfelt thanks to the Assembly Hall Director Wayne Hecht, the State Final Tournament Manager Tom Flanagan, Head Bench Official Ralph Krupke, and the dedicated men and women who volunteer their time and energy to work at the head table and mats as the scorers, public address timers, announces runners, Eugene Drendel of Naperville and Ron Gibson also of Naperville. They have the they uh, ceremonies following uh, the matches. And of course, the winner in Class State A was Mike Mena at 103. And in Class AA, Bill Walsh from Mount Carmel. Mena, of course, from the Sterling Newman, quite a wrestling power. If I could call your attention to the awards area. The advisory committee will be presenting awards at 103 pounds. Class A awards in fourth place from Plano, David Bobby. Third place from Sandwich, Trevor Elliott. And second place from Clifton Central, Parr Schoolman. And your 1989 champion from Sterling Newman with a record of 43-0, Mike Mena. So he's following in the family tradition, right, Rob? And now That's the correct. double A awards. He's got a brilliant future ahead of him. He's going to be one of the top two or three wrestlers in this state before he's through. From John Wentz. In fourth place from Urbana, Sheik Yasagnaga. In third place from Providence New Lenox, Luke Pascal. 
In second place from Joliet Central, Joe Esparza. And the 1989 state champion from Mount Carmel in Chicago, the record now of 34 and 6, Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh came out. There's Bill. Just a junior. Came out second in the sectionals, but he's number one in the state. All right, we'll be back with more wrestling action in just a minute. You asked for it, Chicago, and now you've got it. Schomburg Toyota, the Midwest's largest selling Toyota dealer, introduces the Midwest's lowest price Toyota, the $89 Toyota Tercel. Only at Schomburg Toyota if you come in now. The $89 Toyota Tercel means you can own a brand new Toyota for only $89 a month. $89 a month. Why settle for a Ford, Chevy, or Plymouth? Why settle for a used car? Own a brand new Toyota for only $89 a month. The $89 Toyota. This week only at Schomburg Toyota, 875 West Gulf in Schomburg. The Firestone Supreme High Crank Battery, because it's better to give than to receive. This winter, starting your car is no big deal. To the line, put it to Graham. He shoots one. He scores! No time left, but Cedar and Hogarth indicates a goal. But Ron Hogarth says the Hawks have won the game. There's no time showing on the clock. The red light did not go on. And the Hawks are celebrating a victory. And she, neither has scored. We're about 30 seconds gone into the first period. And those are some kind of singlets. I like those. They're really good looking. Yeah. They're pretty, aren't they? Yeah, but let's let's not forget what we're here for. Shannon Gillespie, a 33 and 2 record on the year. It's his first time at state. Won the Fenton sectional. Meanwhile, Abby Myers. Uh, Bit of a surprise, he beat the number one seed, Sean Cagle, here in the tournament, and uh, he is a senior, a record of 40 and four, and they are going for the big one. Russ Baum, his coach over at Cahokia, and Elias George, Gillespie's coach at Evanston. Now we get the first. Myers couldn't finish that single leg attempt, and uh, good hip pressure by Gillespie to counter for the takedown. He leads two to nothing. Pretty wide open weight class this year, 119. Any one of about eight or 10 people could have come out here, and these are the two that did. An escape for Myers is two to one. 35 seconds to go, and right away we get a whistle. Let's check that, because Myers. Did you see what happened on that, Rob? I don't know if he caught it. No, I didn't. It looked like he got the chin or something. Perhaps a, perhaps a headbutt. They're checking right above his eye. I didn't see them butt heads, but that happened so fast, it might well have uh, been the case. Really, it was uh, as quick as a flash, and they're doing a very, very thorough and rapid check, asking him where he is, does he know? And Myers, uh, you can't give the right answers. They're going to stop this thing right here. If you're actually knocked out in a match, and it happens from time to time, it's an automatic uh, injury default. Uh, Myers is on the bottom here. Okay, you're gonna see the stand up now. Now Myers tries to escape. Looks like he'll get the escape right here, breaks off the hands. There's the escape. He seems to be all right, so we're going to continue now with 38 seconds to go here in the first period. The takedown was awarded to Gillespie, so Myers will lead. start uh, the, this exchange on the bottom. Myers trailing four to one here with 38 seconds to go in the first period. Again, the official asks Abby Myers if he's okay. Abby says yes, so we're off again. And he escapes, one point, four to two. Obviously, Shannon Gillespie has made a decision in this match to wrestle on the feet. He doesn't any, want any part of Myers on the mat. He just wants to shoot takedowns and take his chances. Now it looks like Myers has countered this latest single leg attempt. If he can uh, get around behind him. 10 seconds to go. He'd have a takedown. 
but good defense by Gillespie to avoid the score. End of the first period with Shannon Gillespie and Abby Myers. Gillespie leading four to two. They flip the coin. It comes up green. So Shannon Gillespie has the choice, and they stand up. Gillespie wants to take this match to Myers on the feet. Myers with the early single leg takedown attempt. We'll see, not able to finish it. Gillespie and Myers, both seniors. Myers qualified last year. This is Gillespie's first time, as we mentioned, at the state. 15 seconds gone here in the second period. Gillespie very aggressive. Good leg attack by Gillespie. Myers obviously with a physical strength edge. We'll see if he can uh, work it to his advantage. That's Myers in the blue, Gillespie in the wild kid Evanston orange. And Myers again to go around. Myers with a snap down trying to spin behind Gillespie for the takedown. Gillespie still has the leg. One minute to go here in period number two. Now Gillespie with some pressure of his own. If he can step over, he's got a takedown. And it is a takedown. A point also awarded uh, Gillespie for Myers grabbing the singlet. Seven to two. 35 seconds to go, second period. Exactly. Look at Myers now. Myers gets the reversal. This is the kind of situation Gillespie wanted to avoid. He probably should have just let Myers go and uh, try for another scramble on the feet. But now Myers with a chance to ride out. Ten seconds to go, second period. It's a seven to four lead now for Gillespie. I have a feeling we're going to see a humdinger of the final period. All right, two minutes left. Shannon Gillespie and Abby Myers. Myers will have the choice for the third period. He'll take down. The official you see, Jim Craig of Oak Lawn. Again, the second official is there only. He does not have authority. They will consult with each other if the second official sees something that he feels is contradictory to what the main official is uh, ruling. But only the... Head referee can make a change. Seven to four, Gillespie in the orange. Over Abby Myers. 15 seconds gone here. This is the 119 pound class. Myers trying to break the hands of Gillespie. And Gillespie just called for stalling. No penalty on the first uh, warning. After that, he'll lose a point. Gillespie not trying to improve his position, just content with uh, trying to maintain hand control in the standing position, and that's a uh, that's stalling in the rule book. Myers trying to escape, and he does. Seven to five, two-point match with 30 seconds gone here, a minute 30 to go. Myers with a double underhook here, trying to jack Gillespie up and try to get a takedown, a nice, Nice counter by Gillespie with the trip. Gillespie's coach, Elias George. Both coaches yelling instructions. Russ Baum talking to Myers. One minute, six seconds to go in this. What's Craig saying, Rob? Evidently a caution for an improper starting position. Well, it gives Gillespie uh, another point. It's eight to five. That's the kind of mistake you shouldn't be making at this point in the season. Under a minute left. Eight to five. Gillespie holding on to that three-point lead as he's holding on to the left leg of Abby Myers. Nice change of levels by Gillespie there, trying to get the takedown. 
A lot of rolling around, but no change of control. 30 seconds to go. Still the three-point lead for Shannon Gillespie. Meyer. Myers had a chance for a take down there. Could have spun behind. But Gillespie able to stand up before he could do any damage. Now Myers looking for another throw. You don't do that to Gillespie, who's experienced in the styles of throwing. To go, and this one is just about over because it's a 10 to 5 lead. And there it is, Shannon Gillespie, the decision over Abby Myers by a count of 10 to 5. We're going to pick up the award ceremony next uh, at 112, and then we'll be going over to the class single A mat for a look at one of the finest wrestlers in the state as he tries for another championship. Meanwhile, you're taking a look there at Shannon Gillespie, a senior who finishes the year at 34 and 2. And gave a very good account of himself in the final. We'll take a look at some of the action again. Superior technique on, technique on the feet by Gillespie. Watch Myers trying a throw here. He's just too far away. He doesn't have the, uh, the proper balance. And Gillespie just maintains his balance, falls right on top of him. That was Myers' last chance to come from behind and it didn't quite work. Let's go to the award ceremonies for the 112 pound classes in both A and double A. With a record of 36, 0 and 2, Jason Gonski. Jason Gonski, the winner in class A, Thad Davidson from Litchfield finishes second. Sun Chow. In fifth place from Mount Zion, Todd Oliver. In fourth place from Marist, Dave Nybert. In third place from Johnsburg, McHenry, Mike Lewis. In second place from Springfield, Lamphere, Angie Gardner. And now the two-time state champion from Elgin, Jeff Marabella. A record now of 37 and 0 for the season. Okay, Jeff Mirabella, there he is. And Jeff Mirabella's been there before, his second state championship. We'll be back with more in just a minute. When you walk through the doors of Salozzi Edison Chevrolet, there are two things we always guarantee. First selection, choose from thousands of new Chevrolet cars and trucks ready for immediate delivery. Second is price. Whatever you choose, we'll always guarantee you the very best price or we'll give you back the difference in cash. So for the guaranteed best selection and best price, visit Salozzi Edelson Chevrolet in Elmhurst at York and Roosevelt Roads where well, you, you always, always save more money. See this? It's official. Sports Vision is now Sports Channel. Hi, everybody. This is Gary Thorne, and this is where you're going to see exciting White Sox baseball and Sox 89 Weekly with Jeff Torborg and me, <laughs> Tom Pachurik. And I may even get on once in a while. We hope you'll join us every Monday, Sox 89 Weekly, and, of course, all season long, White Sox baseball. We'll see you there. Taking a look here at the Class AA, I'd like to see if we can't switch over and get the Class uh, Single A match. And we will cut away as soon as we can. We're taking a look here at uh, Ken Gertis against Chuck Wagner, 125 pounds. And obviously, both of them are wearing green. Gertis is red at wearing the red ankle bands with the gold piping around the uniform. Wagner, the green ankle bands. Okay, we'll keep you up to date on that. Let's go over to 1A, where we're going to see Brett Camden, who is the senior from Muhammad Seymour, against Jeff McCombs of Sandwich. Brett Camden, the outstanding wrestler in Class A, has just scored a takedown against Jeff McCombs of Sandwich. He'll be Here's a four-time state place winner going for his third Class A state title. And now he's got a cradle locked on, on McCombs. But McCombs gets a reversal, and it's 2-2. Two -two. 
30 seconds gone in the first period. A lot of action this 125 pound match. Camden came into this match 44 and 0. McCombs 38 and 2. Both his losses to Camden, so without a doubt, these are the two best 125 pounders in the state in Class A. Brett Camden has won 81 consecutive matches. Won the title in 87 and 98. He won it last year at 112. And has pinned 76 opponents. Camden, a nice sit out there for an escape. He takes a three to two lead. Now trying to spin behind. And he's got the takedown. Four to two the score. Forty seconds left to go in the first period. In the Class A 125 pound match. Good luck at both competitors. That was a reversal given by Cam for Camden. That gave him a four to two lead. The escape for McCombs made it four three. Camden beat McCombs six to one in a tournament in December at Plano. And then in a dual meet in January, he beat him seven to one. It looks like this match is gonna be a little bit closer. Four to three now with 15 seconds to go. First period. under my McCombs. That would be two points against anybody in the state except for Brett Camden. Just a great, just great presence of mind to keep the headlock in to avoid giving up control. Camden almost with a headlock to score there at the buzzer. And they gave him two points for the takedown, so it's six to three for Camden heading into the second period. You can't let up for a second against Brett Camden. Very, very quick two points. He scores his points in bunches. He's got a great headlock. He's got a great leg attack. He can do it all. Six to three with Brett Camden leading. Starting period number two. We Quick. get a reversal now. Quickness got him that reversal. Now an eight to three lead. Now he's trying to run an arm bar to try and get some back points. Camden has won all 44 of his matches, as we mentioned. McCombs, 38-2. Camden looking for his third consecutive state championship. A little bit later, we'll be seeing Joey Gilbert of Andrew looking for his fourth. Boy, Gilbert's becoming a legend in his own home world, huh? Well, that's for sure. A lot of people came down to watch him, and uh, he's hoping he'll send them all home happy. Eight to three, the score remains with one minute gone here in the second period, the 125 pound class A match. There is McCombs. Stalemate called there. Camden looking very, very strong on the top as Juan Garish, the uh, sandwich coach looks on. Fifty-four seconds here in the middle period. McCombs trying to sit out, trying to get an escape or a reversal. Nothing doing there. Camden retains control. Just got a, such a great sense of balance, such a sense of knowing where he is. Grant. McCombs looking for a grand B, maybe to turn him over. But look at that hip pressure by Camden. That's as far as McCombs is going to go. You can see the clock in the background. Final 17 seconds of the second period, and the official tells him to break it off. That's what Camden won, won, wanted. He knew he was in trouble there. He just kept the hip pressure on McCombs, tried to get the stalemate, and uh, a fresh start. Look 
of that quickness. That sit out by McCombs would work against just about anybody else, but Camden just followed him all the way around. Five seconds left in period number two. Boy, McCombs is certainly giving it a challenge. I'm telling you that uh, Camden is really being pressed tonight. McCombs is not wrestling a bad match, even though he's losing eight to three. He's doing the things he needs to do to win. Camden is just wrestling on a superior level. Five point lead. Looks like Camden may uh, have gotten a bloody nose there. Yeah, they'll hold off now and they'll check him. Might be looking at his lip. Yeah, I think it uh, split his lip a bit. Just the start of the third period, Camden with a five point lead, eight to three. 125 pound class there is a certain amount of injury time allowed Rob why don't you talk about that a bit you're allowed a cumulative two minutes of injury time in a match the exception is if there is bleeding involved there is no injury time you're allowed you know within reason an unlimited amount of injury time if the, it's a, it's a uh, bleeding injury Camden on top allowing the escape Talk about that strategy. You just give your opponent a point, but obviously there's a method to the, to the madness. You got to go with what you do best and try to neutralize what your opponent does best. In Camden's case, it's wrestling on the feet and trying for takedowns. He doesn't want to get on the mat with McCombs anymore, and he has to risk giving up rever a reversal or for two points or, you know, maybe even more than that. He's just, uh, you know, if he wants to give up points, He'll give up a one-point escape, and that'll be it. He'll go for a takedown and maybe two and more. Knowing the one point will not hurt him. Absolutely. Because he did run into problems in that second Come period. On. Oh, up. Duck under maybe for a takedown here. Good defense by McCombs with the crotch lift. Final minute now of the third period. And they award two points. To take down for McCombs is first of the match. The second point the match. match. Eight to six. Well, we saw that last year in state where uh, I forget who, but just uh, allowed his opponent the escape and ended up losing the match by one point. You know, that happens. And from that point, if, from that standpoint, it looks like maybe it's a bad strategy. But if he hadn't done that, it, the chances are he might have lost the match by more than one point simply because Instead of giving up the smart one point, he might have given up a dump two or three points. Well, over at Class AA, Kent Gerties has won. From uh, Providence, New Lenox. Meanwhile, 20 seconds here. It's still a two-point match over at Class A. Jeff McCombs is really trying everything now. It's crunch time with 10 seconds left. Two-point lead for Brett Camden with nine seconds left is like money in the bank. <laughs> okay. He's not, he's not gonna let this one get away, and in fact, he was just awarded a point. So it's nine to six with five seconds to go. That's the way it looks like it's gonna end. And it does. So congratulations once again to Brett Camden, the Class A 125-pound champion. And Kent Gerties, who was upset here last year, gets his championship at 125 in 1989 over Chuck Wagner of Oak Lawn. Camden, a three-time state champion. Haven't been too many of those in Illinois history. He's only the eighth ever to do it. And they go in and sign the book. Next up, the award ceremonies at Class A and Class AA at 119 pounds. The respective uh, winners will be announced as well as the runners up. Let's pick up the ceremony. In 
third place from Sandwich, Christopher, Christopher Barnaman. In second place from Sterling Newman, Daryl Grennan. And your 1989 champion from Harvard with a record of 34 and 4, Todd Van Lu. Todd Van Lu of Harvard. Rated number one all season at 119, at 119. And he's the state champion in Class A. Sixth place, Mark Wilson. Over to Double A now. In fifth place from Glenbard South, Mike Dussel. In fourth place from Johnsburg, Sean Cagle. In third place from Geneseo Darnell, Darren Cowan. In second place from Cahokia, Abby Myers. The 1989 champion at 19 from Evanston, Shannon Gillespie. Shannon Gillespie, the winner with that 10 to 5 decision over Abby Myers. There is one happy young man. Back in a minute with more IHSA Wrestling. Oh, great king of the jungle, who's the best of the car dealers? Please tell us! When it comes to automobiles, there's only one, Bob Roarman. Hi, Easter Bunny Bob with a great big basket full of savings at Arlington Acura in Palatine. Coupe or sedan, get a new 89 Acura Legend for just $2.99 a month. Up to $2,000 cash back or 3.9 financing on new 88s. There's only one, Bob Roarman. Hop on over to Arlington Acura in Palatine today. If you want the inside story on golf, watch Inside Golf. We'll make bear tracks and visit some shark-infested waters. We'll help your game with tips from the pros, but that's not all. We'll show you places to play and the newest fads in golf fashion. I'm Jeff Solomon. Join me every week for Inside Golf right here on this station. Maybe I should take an unplayable. 130 pound class double A, Terrell Sandifer from uh, Thornton. He's in white. Shelly Resendez, a surprise in the red and white. He is from somebody's alma mater to Miami, did right, Rob? That's you're a Viking. There have been a lot of great wrestling teams at Homewood Flossmoor over the years, but Shelly Resendez is the first ever state finalist from Homewood Flossmoor, and he's had a tremendous tournament. Uh, only finished third in the Andrews sectional, pinned his first two opponents, and then beat a previously undefeated uh, young man from Leiden, Steve Smurs, in the quarterfinals, and then in the semifinals, beat the top-rated Chris Ruska of Conant, also undefeated, to advance to the finals. So he's earned this trip. His coach is Bill Murphy. Sandifer, just a sophomore from Harvey. It's his first year as a varsity wrestler, and look what he's done. He won that section of it, Andrew. His coach, Prentice Lee, has certainly got a lot to be uh, pleased about with his development. 42 and 1 on the year. Both these wrestlers, not only from the Andrew sectional, um, Sandifer was the champion of the Andrew sectional, while Resendez uh, finished third, but both from the same conference, the Sika East. And, uh, They've met twice this year. Sandifer has won at both. 50 seconds left here in the first period. Still no scoring. There's Sam Samorian, the associate official there. And the man with the whistle is uh, Dan Farinosi. Dan from Hoffman Estates. Sam from Northbrook. Sam is always especially a fun guy to see around these tournaments. Really loves the sport. Been around it a while. This is his 17th state tournament. He's wrestled, officiated more state tournaments than any official here. 15 seconds to go, still no scoring. This, the 130 pound match. And coming up after this, we're gonna get a look at Joey Gilbert from Andrew. First good uh, scoring chance of the match to Resendez, unable to keep Sandifer on. 
And you can tell that both of these wrestlers are familiar with each other and have seen each other before, because they're both a little bit tentative. Neither one wants to give each other much of an opening. No scoring. Beautiful hip toss by Resendez, but couldn't quite beat the buzzer. So we go through the first two minutes without a score. Sandifer in white, Resendez in the red. Sandifer from Thornton and Resendez from Homeward Flossmore. Resendez won the toss. He elected to defer the choice, which means he'll get the choice to start the third period. Sandifer chose Bonham. He st stood up. He's going to try for an escape here. Does he have it? Certainly a loss of control, and there's an escape. One to nothing. 15 seconds gone in the second period. Terrell Sandifer and Shelly Resendez. Both these wrestlers have proved in this tournament they can be very explosive. Well, Sand Resendez has lost twice to Sandiford. You've seen these fellas before. Does he change his strategy here? Is he basically doing the same thing he always does? I think he basically does the things that work best for him. Looks like both of them like to stay on the feet. And Resendez with a takedown. Two points. He takes the lead. Two to one with one minute gone here in the second period. He countered that shot by Sandifer, which uh, was, kind of, was kind of a poor attempt at a takedown. Just sort of, uh, sort of shucked him by and came out on top. And now he leads two to one. Somewhat surprised Terrell Sandifer. 59 seconds to go here in the second period. Well, the official Farinosi has warned both for stalling already. As familiar as these two are with each other, I expect a low scoring match. Every point is going to be important. Resendez trying to make a move here. Resendez looking for a tilt. Lost the hand control, and Sandifer gets the reversal. And a 3-2 to two lead with 30 seconds to go. Second period. Sandifer a tough thrower, but also very, also very strong on top. He came from behind in the semifinals against Sean Hill of Fenger was losing nine to six with less than 30 seconds to go and uh, turned him to his back for three points to tie the score and then for two points in the last five seconds to win the match. So he can do it on the mat too, as well as on the feet. 15 seconds left here in period two. Sandifer in the white with a three to two lead over Resendez in the red. Sandifer trying for another tilt. As time runs out, three to two the score, Sandifer leading after the first four minutes. Resendez with the, th with the choice for the third period. He'll choose down, try to es uh, get an escape to tie it, or maybe a reversal to go ahead. Does escape, so it's a tie match now at three. Work it in there, work it in there. Let's go, let's go. With a score of three of three, it's a real cat and mouse game now. One takedown might well win it. 30 seconds gone here in the third period. And both wrestlers will come to the center of the mat. Prentice Lee, the Thornton coach, looks on. As time went in, another head does. Looks like both of the wrestlers wow. are a little bit dazed. If we can take a look at that uh, slow mo on the replay, you're going to see they both go right at each other and collide. It's far into far. It. Both trying to shoot low. 
Resendez is still down. You see Santa for and Lee talking. 124 left to go on this one. The uh, match is tied at three apiece. I guess we won't be able to take a look at that, but uh, they both just went uh, almost like two bucks smacking horns. Both of them elected to try a low single leg shot or double leg. And they both met at the pass. <laughs> Guess we can laugh about it now, but boy, they're both uh, a little woozy. A minute 15 left. Sandifer trying to score with a fireman's carry. He gets two. 5-3 for Terrell. A minute five to go. Resendez trying to escape, but Sandifer has got him. Resendez looking for the reversal. Did he get it? We'll probably award one point for an escape, but doesn't look like there's going to be any award at all. Now they're conferring. The officials are conferring to see if a point should be awarded for a loss of control. And the decision is Farinosi's. Samorian, yes, okay. There is one point awarded. They definitely went out of bounds with, San with Sandifer no longer in control, and one point was the correct call. So one point for a loss of control, then a reversal would be two points, and that did not happen. 47 seconds to go, a one-point match, and Sandifer has the edge. Resendez trying to throw there. Such great balance by Sandifer to counter it. 37 seconds left. I wouldn't be surprised if we see at least one more big move in the last 30 seconds. Well, in a one-point match, anything uh, could do it for either wrestler. Both of them have shown that they can throw, as well as the leg attack, which Sandifer tries here. Down to 20 seconds. <laughs> Off the bat, they go with 15 seconds. <laughs> Terrell Sandifer in white, holding on to that one-point lead, and Shelly Resendez trying to pull something out in the final five seconds. Resendez got to try something, anything. And that's it. And that's it. So by the narrowest of margins, Terrell Sandifer, the sophomore from Harvey, is the state champion. Five points to four at 130 pounds. Sandifer runs his record to 43 and one. And Resendez ends up 40 wins, four defeats, three of them at the hands of Terrell Sandifer. That was a real chess match between two wrestlers with a great deal of respect for each other, but who have seen each other a couple of times and know what the other one likes to do. And sometimes you wind up with a low scoring match. And even though it was a low scoring match, a five to four decision, it was exciting. Well, Shelly Resendez was not going to stay still just because Sandiford beaten him a couple of times. He really gave it a good shot. Taking a look now at the 1A, which is finishing up. Jason Heinhold from Muhammad Seymour against Mike Putz from Piaton. Putz just got an escape, and he now trails 12 to 11. It's been a wild match. Heinhold. Heinhold in the orange. Just got a takedown with about 35 seconds left to uh, take a, that 12 to 10 lead. And we got the final seconds ticking down. It looks like it's going to end up 12-11 in favor of Jason Heinold. Jason Heinold from Muhammad Senior uh, Seymour finishes up as the Class A champion at 130. Second state champion of the night for Muhammad Seymour. They've got three more finalists to go. They could walk out of here with five state champions. That's never happened in one single state tournament, so they could be on a record pace tonight. Of course, they had Brett Camden, the winner earlier. And now Heinhold, again, a one-point margin. Something in that weight classification that I guess tonight builds for close matches. Now we're going over to the awards ceremony in the 125-pound class, in A and AA. Third place, Eddie Davis, Chicago Luther South. Second place, 
from Sandwich, Jeff McCall. And your 1989 state champion with a record of 45-0, a three-time state champion from Muhammad Seymour, Brett Camden. Now the awards in AA at 125. In sixth place, from LaSalle, Peru, Rob Maggio. In fifth place, from Blue Island, Eisenhower, well, Ray Brokaw. Uh... In fourth place, from Marion, Chicago Heights, John St. Clair. In third place, from Granite City, Brent Davis. In second place, from Oak Lawn, Chuck Wagner. And the 1989 state champion at 125 with a record now of 45 and 2 from Providence, New Lenox, Ken Gertis. Okay, a look at Ken Gertis. We shall be back. Okay. Every job needs its own special tool. But now there's a tool that can help you do nearly every job. The Hardware Week Circular from True Value Hardware Stores. Where the Black & Decker 11-piece bullet drill bit set with pilot point design is just $11.49. This entryway motion sensing light control from Heath Zenith for $19.99 covers a 4,000 square foot area. And this Master Mechanic 20-inch plastic toolbox is $13.99 at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. When you want the most complete, most current, and most accurate nightly wrap-up show on television, you want Sports Nightly. Every evening, Sports Nightly brings you all the scores, highlights, and breaking stories from around the world of sports. You'll be on top of all the action from both the professional and college ranks. Whether it takes place on the hardwood, ice, diamond, or gridiron, you can be sure Sports Nightly will be there. So watch Sports Nightly every night right here for expert coverage you can't afford to miss. All right, here's the man everybody expects to be, the man of the hour, Joey Gilbert in the black from Andrew. His opponent, Stan Valley from Notre Dame of Niles. And Joey Gilbert, we could probably recite six minutes worth of credentials for him. Right now, he leads three to nothing. The match is barely eight seconds old. But Joey Gilbert, 66 pins, has lost only one match in his career. He has won 160. And he is looking for his fourth consecutive state title. Only the second young man in the history of this tournament to do that. And the first in class double A. Gilbert already with a three to nothing lead here against Valley. And we have to say a little bit about the match that occurred this afternoon between Gilbert, the defending state champion at 132 last year, and Ryan Schaefer of Sterling, who won it at 126. It was one of those magic moments in the state tournament where everything just stopped while the match between Gilbert and Schaefer went on. Schaefer took Gilbert down right away and sort of woke him up a little bit. Gilbert came back, got a pin in the first period at a minute 43 and received a standing ovation. It was just that much electricity, the kind of electricity you only see in this match you know, maybe in this arena, maybe every five years or so. A rare moment. One minute gone in the first period. Gilbert let Valley go, so it's a three to one score with Gilbert uh, in the lead. And Gilbert, I think, took a little shot underneath the eye, but he's got the finger in the eye. See, they both shake, nothing intentional. Gilbert, again, with a takedown, it's now five to one. Gilbert is so quick on his feet. That's where he likes to go. Virtually impossible to take down, and I've never seen a wrestler as focused as Joey Gilbert is. As much pressure as he's had on him since he's won his first state title, he has never looked past any opponent he's ever wrestled because he knows they're all out to get him. He lost a match, a match as a freshman. Went 43 and one that year, one at 126. Look out. Gilbert going to put Valley on his back. Didn't quite work out. He won an 87 at 132, and last year he won at 132. 76 and 0 those two years. Final eight seconds here. 
Gilbert's coach, Tom Leahy. Valley, uh, first time qualifier. Certainly, we don't want to overlook Stan, who won the Fenton sectional. His coach is uh, Augie Genovese. Valley's had an excellent year, but there's only one thing to say, and he's just in the wrong weight class. A lot of excellent wrestlers have gone either to 130 or to 140 to avoid Gilbert and Schaefer. Again, he lets him go. Gilbert lets Valley go. It's 5 to 2, start of the second period. I don't think there's any question. Gilbert is asking for a tenth this period. Another double leg takedown by Gilbert. 7 to 2 the score. Gilbert comfortably ahead. Vir just virtually unbeatable on his feet. Seconds gone in the second period. Joey Gilbert from Andrew High School, Stan Valley, the green from Niles, Notre Dame. Gilbert looking for some back points here, maybe with a tilt. In the big matches, he tends to go for the takedowns and try to win the match on his feet. But he's looking for some back points here against Valley. 55 seconds left in the second period. Leahy telling him to continue trying for that tilt. Stay on that tip, he's telling him. Valley obviously trying to work out of it. 30 seconds left here. He may get a stalling call on Valley here. He's really not tried to improve his position. Now he's trying to base up. 15 seconds left. Not been able to break the hand control of Gilbert, though. Final three seconds, not much happening here. They'll go to period three with a 7-2 lead for Gilbert and a less than spectacular match so far for Joey. He's getting it done. Well, there's two minutes left in Joey Gilbert's high school career. Here's a replay of a double leg takedown by Gilbert. Look at this quickness. No way to counter this. Look at the power. It just takes him straight backwards. Gets take away. Uh, Joey Gilbert got another takedown. It's 9-2 to two with 15 seconds gone here in the third period. Gilbert well, elected to start the third period, both up, and that's a smart thing to do. Valley hasn't shown he's been able to stay with Gilbert on his feet at all. Gilbert has four takedowns now, and he just got another. Well, you know, you said uh, he's got just a few seconds left in his high school career. There's still a team championship, and Tom Lee, he said before the match, Gilbert is so focused that come Tuesday, after he presumably wins this championship, he'll say, uh, okay, I'm at practice. We've still got another state championship to try to win as a team. Well, that's the kind of guy he is. He would like nothing more than to see his team win a state title as well as himself. One minute to go. Nine to three, Gilbert with the lead. We also understand he will be going to a Big Ten school to wrestle. That's the word from Tom Leahy. Don't know which one yet, but obviously he has several offers. That's where he wants to go. Kind of the perfect folk style wrestler. Very difficult to take down. Folk style, we mean the high school style and the collegiate style. Very difficult to take down. Great on his feet. Just a solid rider on the mat. 30 seconds left. Gilbert about to put his fourth title in his pocket. And there's another takedown. It's 11 to 3. Fifth takedown of the match from Gilbert. He's just been dominant on his feet. Even though the score has, isn't as wide as some of the margins he's had, he's demonstrated the dominance of a four-time state champion. And the crowd starts to cheer with eight seconds to go. Gilbert's getting up. He knows he's got it. He just going to finish it off. 
They're awarding a point. Started celebrating a little early. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised Joey did that. I am a little too. That's a dangerous situation. Yeah, either you can get caught if you, if you do uh, that. Yeah, somebody with with his breathing, I'm very surprised. But then after all this, that's it. There it is. 11 before the final score, and Joey Gilbert, an easy winner over Stan Valley. A shot in the last take down by Gilbert. Let's come Double back. leg shot. Quickly, let's come back and take a look at what's going on here, if we can. A victory ride by Gilbert on the shoulders of his coach, Tom Leahy. This is a great moment in Illinois high school wrestling. The first class double-A wrestler ever to become a four-time state champion. This is just pure happiness right here. Well, if you take a look, everybody's on their feet. This is one of those real standing ovations. This is a true standing ovation for Joey Gilbert. Everybody's up and cheering. It is a moment. You have to understand the pressure Gilbert has been ever since he under, ever since he won that first state title. Everybody in the state's been gunning for him, and four times in a row he came out with a gold medal. Meanwhile, over at the Class A man, let's not forget James Heinhold, brother of Jason, has won. Another championship for the Heinhold family and for Muhammad Seymour. That's three straight. James, the identical twin brother of Jason Heinhold, the 130-pound champion, wins a 7-2 decision over Mark Edwards of Caneland. That's three for three in the finals for Muhammad Seymour. They've got three state champions. Two more to go, Aaron Fancher at 152 and Roy Vandeveer at 171. No team has ever had five individual champions in the history of the Illinois High School Association State Tournament. We may be seeing history. As Joey Gilbert walks off, let's pick up the award ceremonies for the 135, 130 pound classes. And your 1989 state champion from Muhammad Seymour with a record of 41 and three, Jason Heinold. There's Jason, and we're going to see twin brother James up there in a few minutes. Now the award winners at 130 in double-A. In sixth place from Bolingbrook, Charles Jacobs. In fifth place from Providence, New Lenox, Doug Bradley. In fourth place from Conant, Chris Ruska. In third place from Chicago Finger, Sean Hill. In second place from Homewood Flossmore, Shelley Resendez. And the 1989 state champion at 130 pounds with a record now 43 and one from Thornton, Terrell Sandifer. There's Terrell Sandifer by a one point margin. He is champion at 130 pounds. Back in a minute. At Salozzi Edelson Chevrolet, we always guarantee you can't beat our price on any new car or truck or we'll give you back the difference in cash. For example, this low price buys this Cavalier VL Coupe and this Corsica four-door sedan at this low price. And you'll find similar savings on thousands of new cars and trucks all ready for immediate delivery. At Salozzi Edelson Chevrolet in Elmhurst at York and Roosevelt Roads, where, where you, you always, always save more money. Steel and Lober, building great garages and satisfying customers since 1947. Call Steel and Lober now, and with your new garage, get a protector, insulated steel garage door and service door at no additional cost. That's just one reason to call now and find out what thousands of Chicagoans already know. For a great garage at a great price, Steel and Lober's the only name to know. A Steel and Lober garage, the only name to know. Call 636-5660. Starting the 140-pound match, on the left, in black, Mike Palazzo from Glenbar North. 
And in blue on the right and on top right now, George Hoffman from Joliet Central. Another member of the Steelman to make the finals. And he's hoping he will be a bit more successful than his schoolmate, Joe Esparza, who lost to Bill Walsh at 103. Palazzo has qualified, this is the third year. He's qualified at 112 and 126, won the Naperville North sectional. Meanwhile, I guess, Rob, you'd call Hoffman a bit of a surprise, even though he won the sectional at normal. Yeah, well, the, the really real story of 140 pounds was the top bracket and uh, how difficult it was. Most of the highly heralded wrestlers were in that top bracket, including Palazzo, who came out on top. He's just gotten a takedown here. Nice move by Mike Palazzo. He Hoff leads to nothing. Hoffman did an outstanding job getting to the finals. In his very first match here, he was down at 10 to, 10 to 2 at one point against Jim Anderson to Lake Zurich and wound up getting a pin in overtime. And then he won in the quarterfinals, semifinals, and here he is. Two, more, two point near fall for Palazzo. He now leads four to nothing. 35 seconds left here in the first period. This is a rematch of a dual meet match in December. Palazzo beat Hoffman 16 to 6 at that time, and he's got the upper hand again so far. His coach is Mark Hahn. Mac McLaughlin, who we saw before, is the coach for Joliet Central. Right Palazzo now. trying for a tilt here, trying to sit back with it. Five more seconds, he would have had it. The time runs out, and the score after two minutes. Palazzo leading four to nothing. Okay, right here. Palazzo with a duck under changes his level, gets the high crotch lift, and takes Hoffman right to the back. Pretty move for four points by Mike Palazzo. He is on the bottom as we start the second period with Hoffman trying to work him. The important thing to notice, especially for people tuning into high school or college wrestling for the first time, is the strictness with which holes are allowed and disallowed. Rob, you want to talk a bit about the holes that are not permitted, moving against a joint and causing pain? And That's right. Holds, holds that uh, take a joint or a body limb outside the normal range of motion are either illegal or potentially dangerous. And the uh, officials are responsible for the safety of both participants, and they watch that very closely. You can't throw a hammerlock on somebody and put his hand up against his forehead. Five nothing now, another point for Palazzo. Palazzo got an escape there. Hoffman trying to spin behind for a takedown here. Now Palazzo trying to pull it in, stand up and spin behind. This will probably be brought back to the center. Not much happening right here, and as you said, Stale made the call with 39 seconds to go. Palazzo still shutting out his opponent, five to nothing. Mike Palazzo to get his head up. You don't want to get your head buried in that kind of situation. And if Hoffman can spin behind, he'll have two points. 15 seconds to go, period two. That is Palazzo in black, Hoffman in blue, and Hoffman breaks into the scoring column with a reversal for two points. Hoffman coming on here as the second period ends. Palazzo is an escape right at the buzzer. Six to two, Mike Palazzo. Gave up the two point takedown, but got one back. So he only lost one on that exchange. The lead of 
official Gene Johnston from Flossmore. Hoffman, as you can see, gets the takedown. Palazzo will just stand up. And then looks like Hoffman kind of slipped off that. Back to live action now. A minute 45 to go. The score remains 6-2, to two, Palazzo. And again, a stalemate call from Gene Johnston. This the 140-pound Class AA championship. Good look at Palazzo. Escape for Hoffman. Cuts the margin to six to three. Kind of a scramble here at the middle. Both wrestlers had chances to score right there. Neither could take advantage as they go off the bat. Down a minute 23 left in this one. here in the black. He takes the lead, but Barkley is going to win it. Dan Nine to Barkley. five. Dan Barkley of Clinton. Both of them finished third at their respective sectionals, and they're here in the finals, and Dan Barkley is a champion. Let's take a look at the final takedown here in Class 2A. Looked like Palazzo was going to get trapped underneath again. But he picked up that high crotch double. Now he's going to stand up with it. Watch as he stands up with it right here. The lift and brings him back down to the mat for two points. Here in Rockridge in third. Let's go over to the awards ceremonies for the 135 pound classes. And your 1989 champion from Muhammad Seymour with a record of 41 and four, James Heinhold. James and Jason Heinhold are only the second set of brothers to win state championships in the same year. The previous set of brother champions was the Murphys from Normal University High in 1974. Interesting piece of now information. Now the award winners in double A at one. Couple of milestones tonight. In sixth place from Rock Island, 
Mario Vici. In fifth place, from Frem Palatine, Mike Bloom. Is it my imagination, or are there an unusual number of photographers place, around the Paris, victory stand Chicago, for a 135 double A? In third this is a place, historic from moment, Sterling, no question Ryan about it. Schaefer. Everything from mini camps In to brownies. In place, uh, from Notre Dame, on Niles, Joey Gilbert. Dan Valley. And the 1989 and now four-time state champion from Andrew, Joey Gilbert. What a scene. He has a record what now an accomplishment. of 22 and 0 for the season. We'll be back. Gleason, how are those Gleason and Gleason commercials doing? Gleason, after your show runs, we have people all over the dealerships. To buy cars. No, to tell us to change that commercial. So we need a new commercial. We just made one, Bill. Thank you, Gleason. Thank you, Gleason. Here, Here we, we go, go again. again. <laughs> Brought to you by Gleason Chevy, Gleason's Golf Mill Ford, and Gleason Dodge Jeep Eagle. Chicago's American pastime. Next, the 145-pound Class AA's. We will look at another named wrestler here in uh, IHSA competition. Sean Borme, he is in the green. Sean Bormet, pardon me, he uh, has 43 pins on the year, and he's been favored to win this thing, it seems, every year, and somehow falls short. Never made the finals. Well, he's here now against Jim Chikowski of St. Lawrence. Bormet with an early takedown leads two to nothing. Top college prospect, no question about it. He's a two-time national junior freestyle place winner. He's finished third in the state tournament twice here. He's probably the best known and most accomplished non-champion the state has had. He wants to turn that around right now. He lets Chikowski escape. It's two to one, Bormet with the lead with a minute 20 left to go here in period one. This is the third time the two wrestlers have met this year. Bormet has a pin and a technical fall in their two previous meetings, so he has been dominating. And Chikowski, a fine wrestler, only a sophomore. His best day is obviously ahead of him in this tournament. He won 33 matches, lost five, tied one. Bormet, as we mentioned, 47 and 0. There was a thought that he might pin his way through the tournament, but uh, while he's got a couple of pins, he has one decision by a 13 nothing score. So, so much for that idea. He does, however, have 43 pins. That's a single season state record. 45 seconds left in the first period. Bormet with a 4 to 1 lead now, and he is looking for the pin right here. Two points awarded, six to one. Bormet rides very high, and that's what you have to do to get back points. He just had the bar arm and the half Nelson in there on Jim Chikowski and got two, a two-point near fall as they go off the mat. Mike Poles, the coach of Sean Bormet, coach of Providence New Lenox, Bob Trompetta, the Vikings coach at St. Lawrence. Under 30 seconds to go here in the first period. This is the 145 pound double A final. Sean Bormet all over Jim Tchaikovsky. Bormet loves that. That sort of reverse chicken wing. Looks like he may. Trompetta yelling for Tchaikovsky to escape, get one, get one. Didn't quite get it, so at the end of one period, it's a six to one lead for Sean Bourbon. 
That's probably a two-point reversal against anybody except Sean Bormet. Great hip pressure. Just avoided the problem there. Well, Bormet went off the mat to get something out of his mouth and asked the official's permission to do it, which is a wise move. Otherwise, it could cost you a point, as we learned last year. Bormet starting the second period on top. I think he wants to go for this pin and to kind of finish his individual high school career on top. Providence, of course, will be going in the uh, individual, in, in the team state uh, coming up. But uh, I think Providence, Bormet would like to finish this season on a high. Let's it go, that's an escape, and now it's six to two. A minute 20 to go here in period number two. And Bormet getting a takedown. Lightning quick, lets him go again, so it'll be eight to three. Just a clinic being put on by Bormet here. Just superior strength, athletic ability, balance. Look how he's moving Tchaikovsky around. That's the thing when you face a great wrestler like this, it's, it's so difficult to get a good shot at him. Under a minute to go here in the second period, Bormet with the five point lead, but has shown total dominance so far. Bormet, 43 pins in 47 matches this year. Wants to make it 44 for 48. Just superior hip pressure there to hip over Tchaikovsky for his fifth takedown of the match. 10-3. 30 seconds left, second period. Six seconds left, and Bourbet working Tchaikovsky. The official at the top of your picture, Robert Jones from Decatur. Watch this. Now a near fall situation. Three seconds. They break it. Potentially dangerous. 12 to 3 for Bormet. Only three seconds left here in this period. What, what's the conference, you think? The officials are talking. Question probably whether it should be a two or a three point near fall. There was certainly five seconds worth of exposure. Just the question of when the uh, hold became potentially dangerous. Okay, talk more about what you mean by exposure, because this is a key point that is often hard to describe. Well, when the uh, criteria for a near fall is met, which means that as a Bormet gets a reversal, he now leads 14 to three, and now lets him up. Uh, it means that the that the, the shoulders, the plane of the shoulders, have crossed a 45 degree angle to the mat. Very close to a technical fall here, 16 to five. I guess Bormet is trying to keep Tchaikovsky alive so he could pin him. Constantly getting the takedown and letting him go. A minute 30 to go. Seven takedowns so far for Bormet in the match, and the only points Tchaikovsky has scored are the five intentional escapes that Bormet has allowed, and now it's 18 to five. There we go, another one. A minute 15 left in this match. Now he's one point from a technical fall, leading by 14. This may be where he tries to get the pin. One minute to go. Oh, he's gonna go for the technical fall, one more takedown and it'll be all over. And Sean Bormet will have that state title he's always longed for. Does he have it? There it is. Certainly does. Technical fall, 22 to seven, the 15 point margin. And Sean Bormet, as you said, Rob, after a lot of years of disappointment, has certainly earned his state championship at 145. Sean Bormet, congratulations, Sean, from Providence, New Lenox. 
show you some of the action at the close of the match. Gourmet, one of the best ever in the history of Illinois on his feet. Look at this. Tchaikovsky's got the single leg here, but Bormet will just step over superior hip strength and leg strength, and that's the takedown that wins it. A technical fall at 5-14 for Bormet. All right, let's go over to the Class A's, where Steve Kelly, a defending champion at 138, is looking for another championship at a higher weight class. A pin for Steve Kelly. As we joined it, Kelly gets it at 446. Kelly finishes an undefeated season. He's 44-0. The second champion for Sterling Newman this year. Mike Mena won it at 103. And now Steve Kelly of Sterling Newman, his second title at 145. His opponent, Pat O'Connor from the line I bluffs of Glassford. Well, lots of action at 145 on both the Class A and AA levels. Let's go to pick up the award ceremonies at 140 pounds. You're looking at Steve Kelly. Third place, Dan Keen Piatone. Second place, Steve Wood, Harvard. And your 1989 champion from Clinton with a record of 39-3-2, Dan Barkley. Now the AA awards at 140. In sixth place from Naperville Central, Mike Nichols. Fifth from McHenry, Tom Johnson. Fourth place from Chicago Lane, James Sorrell. Third place from Chicago Mount Carmel, Pete Ruiz. In second place from Joliet Central, George Hoffman. And the 1989 state champion at 140 pounds from Glenbard North, Mike Palazzo. With the record now of 43 and one. Mike Palazzo with his Victory over George Hoffman wins at 140. More coming up. Stay tuned. For great personal service and low everyday prices, check the lineup at your neighborhood True Value Hardware Store, where the March Hardware Value of the Month is this ITT Trendline telephone. It's the economical way to add an extra phone. And you'll like its handy last number redial. Plus, it mounts on the wall or sits on a desk. In March, get the ITT Trendline Telephone for just $19.88, where you see the banner at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. Witness the thrills, the excitement, the drama of the wonderful world of Chicago horse racing on Chicago Racing Report. Host Jerry Galatano and Phil Georgeff recap the previous day's results and run down the racing form to see which horses took home the big purse. You'll get feature interviews with riders and trainers, as well as a daily handicapping session with Jerry and Phil. So every weeknight, get the most up-to-date information on Chicago racing with Chicago Racing Report. at 152, Paul Andriotti of Marist, he's in the white, and Mike Frecking of Warren High School in Gurney, the Blue Devil in the blue. Andriotti, defending state champion at 145. Just one of those unflappable wrestlers that always seems to be in control. No situation on the mat phases him. So far, he has a pin and two technical falls in the tournament. Meanwhile, Frecking is his first time qualifying here for state. He won the sectional with Barrington. Frecking with the first scoring chance had a single leg up in the air there. Wasn't able to finish it. And they're back on their feet. Frecking, an interesting technique. He's only had one pin all year, but you told me 22 technical falls. I guess he likes to pile up points. Terror on the mat, Mike Frecking is. One minute gone. Battle of unbeatens. I mean, both of these, both of these young men deserve to be where they are. No question about it. 
the official Jack Lease of Northbrook bringing him back to the center. No score. We've gone about a minute ten. Stall warning against both wrestlers kind of uh, unusual considering there's been quite a lot of action in the first minute even with no points. Andriotti in white, Frecking in the blue, and Andriotti trying to make a move. Duck under, single to a high crotch by Andriotti. He gets his hands out, he's got the two points, he does. Frecking tried to keep in the arm wizard there, but he lost it, and Andriotti has the first takedown, and now this is where Andriotti gets really tough, is on the mat. You get a, you, this is what the opponents dread, being on the mat with Andriotti, because he'll just eat you up down there. 10 seconds left in period one. Andriotti with the only scoring, the takedown for a 2-0 advantage. We're coming to the end of the first period. Here's a shot of the takedown again. High crotch. Andriotti lifts it up and dumps it for a takedown. Andriotti starts on the bottom here as we begin the second period. Andriotti's coach, Mark Gervais, and the coach of Warren is Mark Tiffany. Gervais has got somebody else in the corner, though, for this. 30 seconds gone. It's now 3 to nothing. Andriotti gets a point for an escape. that cradle situation just a little bit, got his hips a little too far over, and Frecking came back and got the reversal. 40 seconds left here in the second period, five to two, Andriotti leading. Right there, right there. There's the uh, Grand B roll by Andriotti. Gets the reverse. With the so hip, with the hip pressure. He regains control. Again, to come back to what makes out of bounds. A certain number of contact points have to be over the bat line. The supporting points of both wrestlers must be out of bounds for the official to call an out of bounds situation. Supporting points meaning knees, knees feet, feet, hands. 24 seconds to go in period two. Andriotti with the five point lead at seven to two. 152 pound match. Andriotti from Marist, defending champ at 145. Frecking from Warren, first time in this tournament. Both are seniors. Andriotti trying to tip Frecking from a crossbody ride, didn't quite do it. Okay, right here we're going to see the ankle pick by Andriotti trying to lock up a cradle. But a nice roll by Frecking, and he scoots Andriotti's hips by, and he'll eventually come out with a reversal there. Start of period number three. And right away they break it. Illegal hold charged against Frecking, so the point will go to Andriotti. Illegal hold, I guess, across the chin, it looked like. Andriotti again trying to turn Frecking with the crossbody ride. So Frecking uh, does get the point at 7 to 3. If 
you're fracking, this is where you don't want to be. You don't want to be underneath Andriotti, who's so tough on top. Frecking won the sectional at Barrington. Andriotti, the sectional at Andrew. Both men, Rob mentioned, undefeated. 43-0 for Andriotti, Frecking 40-0. One minute 10 left in this match. Andriotti with the four-point lead. And we get another call here. I didn't hear what... Uh, Warning Andriotti Jack for stalling on top. Not trying to improve his position. Actually, that probably could have been called a double stall because while Andriotti was just riding, Frecking was not trying to base up and get out because he knew what would happen if he opened up a little bit for Andriotti. One minute left in the match. Sixty-eight competitors, 216 schools. We are now down to the top 52. 13 matches in each. Class A and Class AA. 35 seconds left to go. The score remains here, seven to three. Paul Andriotti from Marist over Mike Frecking from Warren. Andriotti has the bar arm in tight, and now he's going to try and run it. Jack Lee's watching him very, very carefully. Ten seconds left. And Paul Andriotti's going to ride this one out and ride it to his second state championship. Two, one, it's over. Not the prettiest match you'll ever see, but Paul Andriotti did what he had to do. He did what he does best. And that is grind it on the mat. Now we're going over to 1A where, once again, Muhammad Seymour has triumphed. This is Aaron Fancher. Four for four for Muhammad Seymour, losing four to three in the final seconds. Reverses Sean McEwen to his back from Tolono Unity and gets a two-point near fall for a seven to four decision. And over at 2A, Paul Andriotti from Marist with his second state championship. This one at 152 pounds. Well, let's go over now and pick up the award ceremonies at 145 in A and AA. In Class A, in fourth place, from Montini, Pat Mahoney. In third place, from El Paso, Phil Hines. In second place, from Glassford, Illini Bluffs, Pat O'Connor. And your 1989 champion from Sterling Newman with a record of 44-0, a two-time state champion, Steve Kelly. Steve Kelly with the pen wins the Columbia Class A championship, AA, winning Pat O'Connor. In sixth place from DeKalb, Mike Walt. In fifth place from Rockford Guilford, Joe Liambruni. In fourth place from Lake Park, Darren Ferguson. In third place from Naperville Central, Dirk Dorn. In second place from St. Lawrence, Jim Jakowski. And the 1989 state champion from Providence with a record now 48 and 0, Sean Bormet. Sean Bormet finally made it and made it in grand style. He is state champion. On the Class A man from Tolono Unity, Terry Magwell from Argenta Oriana. You know, I would almost say. Double A from Cahokia, Donnell Thomas, Chicago, Mount Carmel, Bill. We'll be back in a minute.
Ray Harrod, the king of Nissan, says forget the list price and make us an offer. King Nissan, the Midwest's largest Nissan dealer, number one in sales because nobody sells Nissans for less. So forget the list price. Make us an offer on new 89 Maximus, Stantas, and Sentras. That's right, make us an offer on any new 89 240SXs, Pulsars, and 300ZX. Forget the list price on trucks, Pathfinders, and vans. Just make us an offer and get the deal of your life. Plus, rebates up to $5,000, no money down financing, and payments as low as $97 per month on new Sentras and trucks. Nobody sells Nissans for less than Ray Harris King Nissan, 5757 West 2E in Niles. The electricity, the sound, the suspense, the entertainment, the fun, the game, the Bulls. Friday, March 31st, it's the Bulls versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. And it's the Acura Legend Classic featuring Bulls players from the past. Call 853-3636. The game is only the beginning. Progress, the 160-pound Class AA match. Interesting story here, Darnell Thomas in the blue. He is from Cahokia against Bill Guy of Mount Carmel. No score with about 30 seconds gone. Now, when you look at Darnell Thomas, you're looking at a young man who basically wrestling is given a new lease on life, Rob. That's correct. He uh, is a, was a product of uh, East St. Louis. Um, transferred to Cahokia after his freshman year, uh, had some gang problems, was, was shot three times, and uh, wrestling at Cahokia has turned him around, one of the outstanding programs in Southern Illinois, and they've had two, this is Cahokia's second state finalist. Both these fellas are qualifying for the first time in the state tournament. Darnell Thomas at 40 wins, one defeat for the Comanche. Bill Guide, 38-2 for the caravan. Coach Bill Wick on Carmel. And Russ Brown for Cahokia. When you talk about a young man who's really at the end of his trail, you're talking about Darnell Thomas. But look what he's become. Here he is in the state finals. Right now trying to escape the leg hold and does. Edwin Ludy from Melrose Park, the official. And I think we have a bloody nose over here for Bill Guy to take care of him and get everybody back in wrestling. 32 seconds left to go. Guide with the first uh, two good takedown shots in this match. He had a fireman's carry earlier and uh, trying to finish that single leg attempt. Thomas just a horse physically, very strong. You're going to have to take good shots against him and finish in order to score. That's uh, Cahokia's assistant coach, Kevin Bement, Kevin Bement, over there with Thomas. He won the uh, Granite City sectional. Guide winning the Andrew sectional. They're working on that nosebleed. They've got to do some work. Let's, why don't we switch over to Class A while we wait? I pick up the action. Terry Bagwell from Unity High against Eric Block of Argenta. Block on top uh, trying to turn Terry Bagwell for points. Bagwell with an 8-2 to two lead. We're in the second period. Both these wrestlers kind of long shots coming out of the Vandalia sectional. Block was the champion. Block the champion. Bagwell the runner-up. But Bagwell with the upper hand right now in terms of the score. One minute to go in the second period of that match. Meanwhile, still no score over double A, so we'll stay with the Class A one for a while. Block still trying to turn Bagwell. Has quite been able to break that plane of the 45 degrees, and now Bagwell with the reversal. Couldn't quite get back points out of it. Bagwell, kind of an interesting story. His, uh, his brother, Woody, wrestles for Fifty and Oakwood and qualified for the state tournament out of the Muhammad Seymour sectional at 103. Eric 
Buck and Terry Bagwell. Nine seconds left to go in the second period. Now a reversal for Block. Won't be able to get back points because both Bagwell's shoulders are off the bat. Bagwell still with a 10-4 lead with just two seconds left to go. Well, let's come back now to double A where they're just starting the second period. Still no score in the match between Darnell Thomas and Bill Guide. Guide starting on top. Thomas will try to get off the bottom and score here. That is Guide in brown. Darnell Thomas in the blue on the bottom. Thomas trying to sit out there, ruled off the mat. Neither man has scored, and we're almost halfway through this match. A lot of upsets occurred in this uh, weight class in yesterday's rounds. The number one, two, and three rated wrestlers in this class all failed to make it even to the semifinals. So some topsy-turvy things going on here. You know, the let's talk a bit about the new weight classes, which they had instituted over the IHSA a couple of years ago to take effect this year. They are more centered in the middleweight classes. That's correct. A study was done by the uh, National Federation of uh, State High School Associations, of which the IHSA is a member, and it was determined that uh, the average weight, uh, weight of a high school wrestler was somewhere in the neighborhood of 140 pounds and that there ought to be more weight classes in the middle. The problem has been that they took away the 98-pound weight class and the chairman of our advisory board did a study of over 10,000 wrestlers in Illinois and discovered that and in fact, while the most popular weight class was in the neighborhood of 140 pounds, 138, the second most popular weight class was 98. So it goes really against the grain of the kind of situation we have here in Illinois. There is widespread sentiment for bringing back the 98-pound class. Everybody wants it. It would have to be a change to the National Federation rules, unfortunately. But uh, I think it's just a matter of time before another lower weight class is brought back. There's a great deal of distance between 103 and 112. Yes. Too much, far too much as yeah. far as most people are concerned. The old way used to be 98 to 105, then 112. So you'd have three, uh, three categories within 14 pounds. You go right up from 103 to 112, then to 119. The little guys, the real little guys, really don't have many places to they go. They don't have much to cut. The, the wrestlers you see here in the state finals tonight generally carry from about 6 to 8 percent body fat except for the heavyweights. No matter what weight you're at, it's about 6 to 8 percent. And obviously if you're at 112 pounds and you're thinking about cutting 9 pounds, there's very not very much to cut as opposed to if you're at a 145, let's say, and want to cut just 5 to 140, there's a lot more to do it. Well, two seconds left to go here in the second period. And still no score. They were attempting to Darnell Thomas for a moment, but he seems to be all right. Bill Guide up on top there to finish out period number two. And obviously, um, everything will hinge on the next two minutes. I'd like to inform our listeners that on, the other, on mat number one, in Class A, Terry Bagwell has just won the 160-pound title for Tolono Unity, and there's Terry with his coach, Bill Billman. De defeating Eric Block. Bagwell, Block a 12-8 to eight winner. Block from uh, Argenta. Now we're back here with 15 seconds gone, and we do have uh, a point for Bill Guy. So it's one to nothing. Guide over Darnell Thomas. Guide rode out Thomas in the second period and then got an escape right at the beginning of the third period, an intentional escape by Thomas. Thomas, I think, wants to take his chances with Guide on his feet. Now Tom Guide with a single leg. It's going to be difficult for him to out-horse Thomas here, particularly at the edge of the mat. Well, 
minute 10 to go. And Thomas, meanwhile, is still on the schneid. He's got to get a point up there, at least to tie and set this thing into overtime. Trying to bring him, guy trying to bring him back to the center. Thomas would just assume, I would guess, ride this one out of bounds. Absolutely. You don't get many, you don't get many chances to take down a guy like Thomas. You might as well try to finish the ones you do get, and that's what guy tried to do right there. Fans getting a little testy over this match because only one point's been scored. Nearly five minutes. Over now five Thomas minutes. Thomas his first good shot of the match. He's got to make his move now. Although they've still got uh, Guide still got his arms around the leg of Darnell Thomas. Guide holding on. Thomas doesn't want him to improve his position. If Guide could lift up that leg, he's good. he's got the advantage. Right now, a stalemate call. 26 seconds to go. Guide with the one to nothing lead, and again, that one to nothing lead is the result of an intentional uh, escape allowed by Thomas. Well, let's see what Darnell Thomas can do. He's certainly come around more serious situations than this in his life. What can he do in the last 15 seconds? Guy just hanging on to the ankle. Eight seconds to go. Thomas thought he had him, but uh, I believe they called potentially dangerous hold there. Potentially dangerous on the ankle of Bill Guy. Well, Thomas has got eight seconds to see what he can do, and Guy has got eight seconds to see if he can hold on. The amazing thing is that Guy, Thomas, really has not had very many good opportunities to score in this match, and that's been the difference. Well, Guy's going to do it. Officials uh, blew the whistle with one second left. So there will be one second left on the clock. Stall warning against Guide with one second. So they'll come and finish this one out. But they have to run the clock all the way down to one second, which will take 59 seconds to do. So either you want to tap dance or we'll just wait this thing out. Well, in the state tournament final match, you want to do everything by the book, give everybody that equal opportunity, even though it's pretty difficult to do something in one second. Well, Darnell Thomas has got to be very disappointed, but give credit to Guide. He really kept Thomas away. Thomas was really never able to get a clean shot at Guide. And uh, somebody that wa watched this match might uh, Accused guy of doing a lot of hanging on, but uh, again, Thomas really never got a clean shot. Well, they will. You can see the clock in the background ticking down the final seconds, and they will just do it one more time. That's it. So, Bill Guide, first time in the tournament, he is the 160-pound champion. Darnell Thomas coming in second. Guide from Mount Carmel, a winner for the caravan, and Thomas from the Cahokia Comanche. Let's pick up the award ceremonies now at 152. In Class A, in fourth place from Mount Pulaski, Joey Cole. In third place from Chicago Luther South, Stefan Jones. Second place from Tolono Unity, Sean McEwen. And your 1989 champion from Muhammad Seymour with a record of 31 and 9, Aaron Fancher. Now the double A awards at 152 in sixth place from Rock Island. Second place from Warren, Mike Fricky. And the 1989 champion, now a two time champion from Marist, Paul Andriani. To the record now of 45. Marist, Paul Andriani, two time champion. Class A man, the championship at 170.
171 pounds. Next up, the 171 pound match. And let's go over to Class A for this because, Rob, uh, we could see some history here between Steve Rusk of uh, Orion and Roy Vanderveer of Muhammad Seymour. We, this is the 52nd year of the state tournament. And no team has ever crowned as many as five individual champions in a single tournament. Muhammad Seymour has gone four for four in this tournament with Brett Camden, Jason Heinold, James Heinold, and Aaron Fancher getting an upset win at 152. And Roy Vandeveer in the orange singlet here at 171 is gonna try and make it five for five. The first team with five state champions ever in Illinois. Steve Rusk, his opponent in the black. 40 wins, only one defeat. Vandeveer, a record of 38-3 for Muhammad Seymour. Rusk with the first good takedown opportunity, and he gets the takedown on Vandeveer. Both these wrestlers outstanding on their feet. Stands up with the leg, gets a reversal. One and a the score. Once again, the official Jack Lease. Two-two tie with 50 seconds to go here in the first period. Now Vandeveer is kind of trying to take Rusk for a ride. Vandeveer isn't bad on the mat, but he really prefers going on the feet, going with takedowns. The score is tied at two with 35 seconds left, first period. One thing that I think might be on his mind is that Rusk very good on his feet. He really respects Rusk's takedown ability, and I think he might want to keep Rusk on the mat where he knows he's where he knows he, Vandeveer, has some skills as well. A junior, Vandeveer, the senior. Vandeveer warned for stalling on the top, not trying to improve his position. 23 seconds left here. <laughs> Rusk almost would be escaped. They give him the point. Would be an escape, loss of control. Rusk with the 3 2 lead. Now, two points for the takedown. Nice shuck by, by Rusk right at the buzzer to get the takedown. This is going to be a slam bang match. Vandeveer knocked off. Right here, the lift by Rusk. the takedown. Five to two, he leads. We start the second period. Vandeveer in the orange, Rusk in the black. Both wrestlers with the upper body tie. And they're off the bat. Lease will bring them back. Sports Vision will also bring you the IHSA Team Championships. Another throw. No points yet. Six to two, Rusk ahead. This should be a stalemate situation right here. I don't think Vandeveer will be able to spin behind. The team championships will take place at uh, West Line High School. West Line for the Class AA teams. Mohamed Seymour for the Class A teams. Should be a dandy tournament. 
We'll be bringing you uh, the double A from West Life. Russ trying to score with a throw, and he gets rethrown by Vanderbeer. Six to four. Six to four and two back points. A four point throw by Vanderveer ties the score. Under 30 seconds to go, second period. That initially started out as Rusk's throw, but a rethrow by Vanderveer got him four points, and we got a tie of match. 21 seconds left here in the second two minutes. Vandeveer again, Russ trying to roll out. Vandeveer hold on, so we've got uh, 12 seconds left. Match tied at six. End of the second period, so again, the third period will tell all. Okay, right here, watch. Al Rusk originally starts with that throw, but Randevere rethrows him right to his back. That's a two point takedown, two more points for the near fall, ties the score. And Vandeveer will start down for the third period, and there's the intentional escape by Rusk. Again, the reason being Rusk would rather be on his feet, score more points that way. But we've seen it backfire. Rusk with a single leg. Trying to lift it, trying to get the points. Nothing yet. Vandeveer countering with the wizard and no points. Off the mat. 132 left in the match. Vandeveer with the one point lead on the intentional escape. Good action by both these wrestlers. A very deep shot there by Rusk took it from a long way away, which is why he couldn't really finish it. Stalemate brings them to their feet. Another shot by, by Rusk here. Still 7-6, Vandeveer with the lead, tenuous though it may be, a minute left to go. Rusk has had a lot of opportunities to score, hasn't been able to finish, good defense by Vandeveer, and Vandeveer has taken advantage of the shots he's had. 56 seconds left. Again, a win by Vandeveer would give Mohamed Seymour five state champions in one meet. First time in the 52-year history of the state meet. Well, he's got 45 seconds. Vandeveer with a body lock, and he throws Rusk to his back. Body lock and trip for Vandeveer, and this ought to close it out. 25 seconds and counting. It's going to be a record-breaking performance for Muhammad Seymour. And this may be a pin, and it is. 541. Well, give that young man a lot of credit. Roy Vandeveer. Not only wins the state championship for himself, but makes history for his school. Mohamed Seymour with five state champions and one meet never been done before, and here is the way it happened. Okay, here it is. Vanderveer with the body lock and the trip, the leg trip, takes Rusk right to his back. Rusk is dazed, and that gives Vanderveer just enough time to lock up the pin. Now Vandeveer with the chest to chest. And there's the pin. Whammo, beautifully executed. Roy Vandeveer, the senior. And what an exhibition he put on. In the double A match, Kip Henley of Downers Grove South won the 171 pound title with an 11 to five win over Tuhan Waller of Thornwood. There is Kip, the senior. Third time he qualified, and he gets the win. Let's go to the award ceremonies. And your 1989 champion, 
from Tolono Unity, Terry Bagwell, with a 37-6 record. And double A at 160. In sixth place from Barrington, Wally Pollock. In fifth place from West Aurora, Corey Anderson. In fourth place from Kona, Courtney Bitter. In third place from Lincoln Way, Rich Murray. In second place from Cahokia, Darnell Thomas. And the 1989 state champion at 160 from Mount Carmel, Bill Guide. Record now of 41 and two. Bill Guide with that one to nothing victory gets himself a state championship. There's Bill Guide from Mount Carmel High School. Now wrestling at 189 and double A from Oak Lawn, Sharif Zigar from Providence New Legs, Mike McLarence. Now wrestling at 189. Now let's pick up the 185, uh, 189 pound match at the double A's. Sharif Zigar from Oak Lawn. He is in the, uh, on the left side of your picture against Mike McLarence from Providence New Lenox. McLarence with his shoulder heavily taped from a uh, football injury. McLarence is the uh, quarterback. A minute 45 to go and McLarence is down. That will be a uh, two point takedown for Sharif Zigar. Zigar third at 185 last year, won the Andrew sectional. But he has been dominant in the 89 tournament. Two pins and a decision that went 13 to two. So Zigar. Come on, don't get sloppy, get out of here, stand here. Would certainly come across as the favorite, especially in view of uh, the injury to McLaren's shoulder, Rob. I wonder how much that, uh, well, you've watched him. How much is that going to hurt him? Because he just re-injured it uh, this past week. You know, I saw him uh, in his matches yesterday, and there were times when he could barely move that shoulder. As you can see here, he's a dangerous thrower. He loves to throw, very dangerous at it. Well, he trails two to one, but he is almost uh, near fall. I tell you, Zegar is in trouble right here. Big trouble. Clarence holding him down. Leading now with the takedown points, three to two, but he may be getting more here. Clarence may be trying to bring him back in. 33 seconds left to go, and Zegar gets across the boundary line, and boy, he could breathe a little bit more easily. I have a feeling that that shoulder may not be hurting McLarence a terrible lot, even though it's heavily taped. This is his chance. He's ahead of an undefeated wrestler who's been very highly thought of all year, and injury or no injury, he knows he can throw, and uh, he's going for it. Six to two, he leads. An escape, though, by Zegar, so that'll make it six to three, and they'll bring him back. Slam bang action here from the opening whistle. 25 seconds left, first period. Zegar likes to attack, and that's just what a guy who likes to throw like McLaren's likes to see. He likes to see that opponent coming into him so he can be catching with that throw. Living by the sword, dying by the sword. Zegar now. Off the bat, no points awarded. Time runs out for the first two minutes. McLaren's missed most of December with that injury. His record, 23 wins, two losses, a draw. Right here. Just a hip pop by McLaren's right off, right off his own back. Put Seeger on his back. Back live now, actually, in the second period. 
Seagar getting to a little feet. bit out of control there, trying to turn McLaren's to his back. Seagar gets a point. Loss of control, seven to three now. McLaren's leads. Seagar trying to get a leg attack in on McLaren's, but McLaren's, you can see, has that double underhook in. And that's the defense against a leg attack. It's very difficult to shake a double underhook and attack the legs. And that's what McLaren's is doing. One fifteen to go, second period. Still a 7-3 to three edge for Mike McLaren's from Providence New Lennox. Another, and look out. Another hip, uh, hip pop by McLaren's. It looked like he was being tripped to his own back. And he just popped the hips and put Seagar on his back. No pin yet, says the official. 50 seconds left. Seagar right now is wishing he was somewhere north of Champaign. Twelve to three. Back points given to McLaren. Now Zegar trying to make a move with 30 seconds to go. And now two points on the reversal for Sharif Zegar. Zegar undefeated. Rob told you, 42 victories. 17 seconds left in the second period. Zegar on top. Sometimes you live by the throw and you die by the throw, but McLaren's has really lived by the throw in this match. Just tremendous hip action to get out of a two danger spots and turn them into five point moves for himself. Well, he goes in with a seven point lead in the final two minutes. Okay, watch Seagar here. He changes his level. He gets the trip. Tries to trip McLaren backwards. Look at this rethrow. Pops the hips. Wow. And brings him right over. Just a simple rethrow by McLaren's got him five more points, and that's discouraging to a guy like Seagar who thought he might have had four or five points himself. McLaren's keeping the pressure on. A minute 45 left. Seagar trying to escape. McLaren still has that left arm, but now they award one point to Seagar for the escape. 12 to 6. Bill Marquardt from Wilmington, the official. Another throw by, by, by McLaren. McLaren is really putting on a show here. Two more points for McLaren. Just a simple hip toss. That's the third time he's thrown Seagar in this match. And three more points. So it's 17 to 6 now, and Seagar looks at the scoreboard and says, whoa, wait a minute. Now McLaren. And Mark Quarter having a discussion here. McLaren's, uh, I guess, complaining about his knee. You can see the big brace on that left knee, or he will be able to see it in a minute. It's amazing. McLaren's may be on the verge of a state championship in what has just been an injury-plagued season for him. Well, they move quickly, but not quite that quickly. All right, just a, just a simple, simple hip toss here right on the edge of the mat. I think Zegar maybe just relaxed a second because he figured edge of the mat, he wouldn't be in trouble. Uh, meanwhile, they've started the clock on McLaren's two minutes for injury, and uh, the problem was the left knee. Again, McLaren's just an injury-plagued season. He, had a, he was out December with a, an injured shoulder and knee from the football season. He had arthroscopic shoulder surgery, and he's re-injured the shoulder a couple of times, but somehow he's found a way just to look beyond all that pain and uh, maybe go for a state title here. 
Under a minute to go, Zegar with the escape brings the score within 10, 17 to 7, but he's got to pin him right here to salvage this title. We don't know what's hurting with Clarence, shoulder, knee, both or neither, but he's got to hold on for another 33 seconds. It's difficult to win consistently when throwing is not only your major, but perhaps your only weapon. But if you do it well enough, you, you can go a long way. And obviously, uh, McLaren's has shown he's done that. 20 seconds to go. Two points on the reversal of takedown for Zegar, 17 to nine. Clock ticking at 10, McLaren trying to hold on, but Zegar putting on the pressure. McLaren looking right at the clock. Letting it run down, and he's got it. Mike McLaren with the upset win over previously undefeated Sharif Zegar. Three big throws is what did it for McLaren. Injured shoulder, injured knee. Six weeks off of the, in the season to rest those injuries, but he's a state champion. A one happy young man. His coach, Mike Poles. The third state champion for Providence in this tournament. Congratulations to Mike McLaren's boy. After the year he's had, I guess this makes up for it. Let's go over to single A. We're almost done there. Looks like we're headed for we're overtime. Headed for OT between Pat O'Neill of Fort Byron and Chris Stedman from Richmond Burton. Number one against number two here. Stedman undefeated at 38 and 0. Almost had a takedown there at the buzzer. We're going to go to overtime here at 189. Stedman at the black. That's Stedman you're looking at. Check it. That's uh, O'Neill. Pat O'Neill, a senior, 25 and 1. Stedman, undefeated, 39 and 0. Okay, let's explain the overtime. In overtime, you wrestle three one-minute periods that are essentially mirrors of the regular match. The first period, both wrestlers start on their feet. And again, there will be a coin flip at the beginning of the second period. Interesting rule change from last year to this year is that the overtime is no longer a separate match. It is an extension of the regular match. We will not reset the scoreboard to 0-0. It will remain at 2-2. If the overtime should end in a tie, what happens in the regulation match will count just as much as what happens in the overtime match. For example, if you've been warned for stalling, that would carry over to the overtime, so your second warning would result in a point for your opponent. That's correct. Here's Chris Stedman of Richmond Burton, 38 and 0, going into the overtime against Pat O'Neill of Mount of Port Byron, Riverdale, just walking into your picture. of an overtime match, conditioning plays such an important role. There's a hip toss by Stedman, and he's... They give him the points. Two points, but nothing on the back. Bush. That's, the, that's the end of the first overtime, with Stedman now taking the 4-2 lead. Both shoulders of O'Neill were off the mat following the throw, so no back points could be awarded. Let's have a look at that. Hip toss by Stedman. 
O'Neal pushing Stedman was a perfect candidate for that hip toss, and even though he got he got uh, rolled through by O'Neal, couldn't break the control. Back live, second overtime period underway. There will be three. It is not a sudden death situation. Jim Craig, the official, and now awards another point to Stedman. It is five to two. An escape for Stedman. He opens up a three-point lead. And I think he also opened up a cut. Or a Possible. Nose. Yeah. yeah, they're looking at his nose. They'll stuff some cotton up there. 47 seconds left here in the second overtime. Well, the other matches, of course, will not start on the double-A, class double-A mat, until this match is concluded. Now, is the injury time cumulative too, or do you start fresh in the overtime? Of course, bleeding it's, is it's, cum it's cumulative all the way through the match. Two minutes, two minutes. O'Neill getting a little advice there from uh, Jim Boyd, his coach. Well, with a moment to reflect here, I still can't get over the, the gutty performance by Mike McLaren. It's really turning all those opportunities against him into opportunities for him. Just an amazing, amazing performance by McLaren in this tournament. There was talk earlier in the week that my, that McLaren might not even wrestle because the shoulder injury was so serious. And here he is, a state champion. Just an amazing performance. Action back in. 35 seconds to go. Second overtime. Stedman in the maroon. He is on the left with the 5-2 to two lead. Match was tied at 2 after regulation 6 minutes. O'Neal in deep on that double leg. Stedman trying to stay off his back, just give up the two points. It is a takedown. It's a one-point match. Ten seconds to go. And they go off the mat. Stedman will try to get a quick escape here in the last six seconds so he could go into that third period with a two-point lead because O'Neill will almost certainly start in the down position. And he does get an escape with one second left. So he does come in with the six to four two-point lead. And that's a clutch move by Stedman. O'Neill starting. Shuck by by O'Neill, single leg, converts to a double, lifts it, and he'll take Stedman backwards for the takedown. Actually, just a lift and a dunk. Stedman avoids the back points. Action back live now. 47 seconds to go. Still a two-point lead for Stedman, who is on your left. At another point. Escape point makes it seven to four. O'Neill warned for stalling on the bottom, and that makes it seven to four. There's John Vail, the Richmond Burton coach, following instructions to Stedman. And now O'Neill gets a reversal. So just like that, it's seven to six. Very important point. It was a stall point, not an escape point. A couple of critical scores by Stedman had escaped right at the end of the second period. And this penalty point he picked up early in the third made that reversal expendable. He still leads 76. And the now they just started running. the clock. The clock was running before the action started, and we will reset right now because the officials picked it up immediately. And at least two seconds went off the clock. point match and what time is in again there will be 17 seconds left Sorry. Chris Stedman trying to maintain that perfect record it's 39 and 0 
Pat O'Neill has lost but once in 26 matches. And now the official calls have been 20 seconds, I believe, is a bit generous. I think there were 17 seconds on the clock, but. Stedman trying to escape, and he has escaped. It's now eight to six. Now that may do it for him. And O'Neill Stedman got another shot in the, in, the, in the face there. Yeah, it was a bull charge by O'Neill. And Stedman just sidestepped and went right back out of bounds. Seven seconds left. What's happening, Rob? Make out what Looks uh, like a point for, point for each. Maybe unnecessary roughness. There it is, and Chris Stedman holds on and wins it. Chris Stedman, 9 to 7 in overtime, wins the 189 pound Class A state title and the first state champion ever for Richmond Burton. Most interesting match. Now let's go pick up the award ceremony at 171. Steve Rusk, Orion. And your 1989 champion with a record of 39 and 3 from Mohammed Seymour, Roy Vandeveer. Uh, Roy Vandeveer did it. He got himself a championship. In double A, Mohammed Seymour is fifth in one match. In sixth play from Chicago Simeon. A little bit of history Pino. being made at the Class A level, too. In fifth place from Joliet West, Doug Buell. In fourth place from Chicago Marist, Tim Houston. In third place from Wabatsi Valley Aurora, Dan Driscoll. In second place from Thornwood, Dwan Waller. And the 1989 state champion at 171 from Donners Grove South, Kip Henley. There's Record Kip now Henley. 40 and 2. From Donners Grove South, the winner at 171. Well, the heavyweights are up next, although they're officially called the 275 pounders in the wrestling for the championship at 275 from Maris, Kevin Nolan. From Rock Kevin Hardy's Nolan Jim from uh, Marist. Wrestling for the Class A Championship at 275. 41 and 1 on the Sandwich. year. Sean Hickerson. And his opponent, Jim Ramsey from Rockford East. You can see he's a real big guy. Neither of these guys is small, but Ramsey's got to be every bit of what, 240, 250? Ramsey about 245, 250 pounder. And Nolan. Certainly we would be considered the uh, heavy favorite here. He doesn't have the weight or the bulk of Ramsey, but is much, much quicker. Won the normal sectional. Ramsey winning out at East Moline. And he really did well because uh, he beat the guy who was supposed to be here and beat him rather handily, but it uh, took overtime. Mike Manganello, right? Eight, that was uh, Mike Manganello from uh, Mount Carmel. Ramsey beat him eight to three in overtime. Quickness is what has won Nolan most of his matches this year. Excellent leg attack for a big man, and there he is attacking on a single leg takedown attempt. Nothing doing so far. One minute ten left in the first period. Official David Matthews from Naperville watching closely. I don't 
bring him back with 53 seconds left in period number one. Ramsey, a genuine long shot to be here, as a matter of fact. Um, comes from a, comes from a, an area of the state where they're still trying to improve wrestling in general. But uh, Ramsey got himself a name early in the season by beating uh, several very highly regarded people. Nolan. Nolan countered a throw attempt by Ramsey. Scores the first two, and he's given two back points, so it'll be a 4 nothing lead with 20 seconds to go in period number one. Back points are generally self-explanatory, Rob, but how about going into the reason they're awarded? Okay, back points are awarded when the plane of the shoulder blades breaks a 45-degree angle between the mat and perpendicular to the mat. If it's uh, if the if if that plane is broken for at least a two count, it's two points. If it's broken for at least a five consecutive count, it's three points. Reverse, rather an escape by Remzi gets him a point. The first period ends with Nolan leading four to one. Remzi 38 and three for the Erabs of Rockford East. Let's take a look at the action here in period one. Okay, now right here, Ramsey is going to try a throw, but Nolan just straightened out, and there's the near, there's the exposure, as you can see. Both shoulders, for at least a two count, broke that plane, a 45 degree plane, between 90 degrees perpendicular and the mat. Back live now, 10 seconds gone in period number two. The score remains 4-1 for Kevin Nolan, who's on top. You're gonna throw Ramsey, you're gonna have to do a lot of throwing. Nolan really not a thrower. He's a good, just a good basic wrestler who wins with, with good technique, good riding, and quickness. Um, again, a good double leg attack. And it doesn't generally work against a heavyweight bigger than you are, but he's got the strength to do it, as he's shown time after time this year. One minute, nine seconds left here in the second period. Score remains 4-1 for Nolan. Attempt by Ramsey to get to his feet. Marist wrestler is traditionally very, very tough on the mat. Nolan's shown he's no exception. 45 seconds left in the second period. And uh, referee Matthews will bring him back to the middle. Quite a bit of action over at the Class A match. Maybe we can drop in on that for a bit. Steve Weekly of Sandwich against Sean Hickerson of Orion. And they're flinging each other around like rag dolls. Meanwhile, Remzi gets two points and we go over to the Weekly, who fell behind one to nothing on an escape earlier in this period, just took the lead on a takedown. He now leads two to one over Sean Hickerson of Orion. Weekly 40-0-1 coming into this match has been rated number one since the opening bell in Class A. Hickerson now trying to stand up. Weekly is one big young man, too. About six feet tall, about 255 pounds or so. And he moves his weight very well for somebody as big as he had. We get the escape, so it's a 2-2 tie. Let's go back to 2A as we'll begin the third and final period here, barring overtime, of course. And Remzi, with a couple of late points uh, in that second period, has come on to a 5-3 deficit with Kevin Nolan, the heavy favorite. 
Starting on the bottom. Nolan and White, Remzi in the dark with the pinstripes. Nolan with a stand up trying to break the hands, but Remzi brings it back to the mat. dangerous hold called on the arm. David Matthews smiling a bit. I think he was in a more uncomfortable position for the moment than either wrestler would. Checking on Nolan. A minute 35 to go in this one. It's still a very tight match. Nolan with a two-point lead. There's a good look at Kevin. One of the Maris Redskins. Ramsey from Rockford East. Looking for the escape point. Down goes Nolan. Good move by Remsey, but no points yet. Nice motion and body control by Remsey to uh, regain control there after Nolan had uh, executed the stand-up. A minute 11 to go in this one. Now we're going to get some medical attention here for Kevin Nolan. Start the clock, says the official. And they will check him out. Meanwhile, Remsey getting some advice. Let's go back to 1A and see what's happening over here. A minute 45 to go in this match. Another takedown for Weekly. He now leads 5-3 to three over Hickerson. A little edge of the mat action here. Can't quite establish control. That's Weekly. We're looking at him. Michael Wilkie from Oak Park is the referee in this one. Weekly looking for another takedown. Very good on his feet and moves very well for a young man of his build. All right, let's go back to two-way now and finish up over here because this match is also a 5-3 match. Nolan still trying to get an escape, and now he's thrown the legs over. He's got a reversal. Two big points for Kevin Nolan. Opens up a four-point lead with 50 seconds and counting. No, no. Go, go, go. Bear with us here. We've got two matches on each mat, uh, or a match on each mat going down to the wire. We may switch back and forth. Go, go, go. Seven to three, clock at 30. Kevin Nolan looking for his first state championship. He and Remzi are both seniors. And they'll stop it with 25 to go. These are the, the heavyweights, 275 pound maximum, and Nolan working now. Remzi tried to sit out there. Boy, did that cost Just him. wasn't quick enough with it, and Nolan caught him and uh, took Four him points. to his back. And that'll just about wrap it up. Yeah, nine to three now, only two points given. Back points, five seconds. This one's over, and Kevin Nolan has got himself a state title. Kevin Nolan, the winner. Let's quickly switch over to the 1A mat, uh, the single A. Still 5-3 with Weekly on the left ahead. You see the clock, 20 seconds to go. Sean Hickerson from Orion. Weekly with the double underhook here. Again, Hickerson with the double underhook, trying to shake that. Can't get any kind of a leg attack going on, Weekly. Well, he's got seven seconds to try to send this match into OT. One second left. And it looks like uh, Steve Weekly has got it. There it is. Five to three, Steve Weekly. A uh, Weekly hit the hit the bat like a sack of potatoes at the end. Boy, looks like maybe he got a little bit of a headbutt there. A little bit of frustration on the part of Hickerson. So we have both heavyweights crowned: Steve Weekly in the Class A and Kevin Nolan 
in double A. And the first state champion ever for Sandwich, and he gets a hug from his coach, Lon Garish. Now let's pick up the uh, award ceremonies now at 189. At 189 pounds in Class A fourth place, Dan McGee, Hoopston Eastland. Third place from Glassford Illini Bluffs, Tim Hageman. In second place from Port Byron, Riverdale, Pat O'Neill. And your 1989 champion from Richmond Burton, Chris Stedman, with a record of 39 and 0. In double A at 189, in sixth place from Conat, John Medagovich. In fifth place from